and is it really November? Is that when they do that? Yeah, no shape. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. They're starting now. Whenever I got experience, they really enjoyed it. I had a few in the space. Yeah. We just had some yeah. people that have been here for three days. And I had two good meals. I had a grandma's house up like three days. Never like this because I don't see it. Seafood, you have it's like we have Graham. I'm saying, fried Graham, what's your Kelly? I didn't say last time, red food. Yeah, I know there was a good song. I think you smell 100% of the time. I took a ski hill. I must have lived by it. So I grabbed all the recent and they showed this video of this avalanche coming down and wiping out all these people that were at the chair and everything. Uh, and so I grabbed all my recipes here, and I go run to the hill. ski hill. The tourists and, don't like and it. And I run into like, like the, the restaurant area. You were, like you were in there. So You're what we started doing, doing crab is that we get from the people. I love it. That was like, that was, was like yesterday. yesterday. Uh, you must be You're watching old things. Really? I know. There's no no one's just here like, no. We used to serve it at the Bay of Beer, Texas. I don't know what you were there, but you were like the viewer in the restaurant, it's, like the, you know, the no, a lot of yeah, ski resort. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. walk on the street. We did that a lot. It was bizarre. Yeah, yeah. 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 like, few restaurants here can still be. I know. I know. It's Canadian. It's like, 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 yeah, she'd be like, what's up? Come here. Yeah. That's pretty hey, good. I get that all over there. You're already starting the No Shave November? Yeah. What's your start? Getting a jump start on Chief. Oh. Worst. You're going to play Santa Claus this year? Oh, it's five of them. Oh. Yeah. yeah, he's still clean shaving. Um, yeah, no, I'm too skinny for Sam. You are. No. <laughs> you lost your belly belly. You're oh, oh, oh. proud of you. That's awesome. Okay, y'all ready? It was just two weeks ago, Jude. I'm sorry. Get on your own side. Oh, yeah. Sorry, not Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, it's five o'clock. We're going to call the City Council regular meeting Thursday, September 21st, 2023 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, I believe Mr. Adams is going to give us lead, lead with our prayer. Uh, and bow your heads with me, please. Oh God, in a world that sometimes seems to have gone crazy and lost its way, we come to you not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We see all the crazy, but sometimes stop looking for the multitudes of blessing equally apparent and right before our eyes. Lord, we ask your help in remembering sometimes we just need to stop and smell that salt air. We pray for the wisdom and strength to be the people you've called us to be, people who seek and work towards a world filled with love and compassion. Be ever present with our city leaders and help them be wise and faithful stewards of our blessed community. We ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to open the public hearing. The City Council will conduct a public hearing on the following items. The first item is FPLT 23001288 Palmia Beach Pud Unit 7, being 37.57 acres if land out of the Edward Hall Survey, abstract number 160, certificate number 227, and being a portion of the 143 
0.109 acre tract of the land described as tract two in the special warranty deed from HCB Beach, Texas LLC to KM Beach LLC recorded in document number 20130077798 in the official public records of Nueces County, Texas, applicant KM Beach LLC, property location 3800 Highway 361. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on this public hearing item? Okay, here and then we'll go to the next item, which is FPLT 23001290, Port Aransas Community Center, being a replat of lots 29 and 30, Block 1, Jed P. Brundrett Subdivision, a map of which is recorded in Volume 67, Page 80, Map Re Records of Nueces County, Texas, Lots 7, 8, and 9, Block 3, Joe Allister Subdivision, a map of which is recorded in Volume 1, Page 7, said map records in the portion of Oaks Avenue closed by City Ordinance 2023-01. Applicant is the City of Port Aransas, property location 709 Allister. Anyone here for this item? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and move on to item four, which is proclamations and presentations. So today joining us from the Port of Corpus Christi, we have Chairman Zahn, who is going to introduce the new Port of Corpus Christi Chief Executive Officer, Kent Britton. Welcome. I appreciate this opportunity to come before you and talk about something that's dear to my heart, and that's something, the Port of Corpus Christi. And I want to tell you that at the very end of my term, I term out in December, and I know there's a lot of people happy about that, but the happiest one's probably standing, sitting right behind me here. <laughs> But uh, we went through an, uh, an arduous process here the last five months to pick a new CEO. And I want to tell you that I'm going to tell you why it was such an important job to 46 people that they made an application. I will tell you that we did weed some out contrary to what we all thought that Al Gore invented the internet. I did have a candidate that claimed he uh, invented the internet, but, <laughs> but, uh, and going through the process, I'll have to tell you that we uh, appointed Kent Brenton as our interim CEO to replace Sean Strawbridge. And so from my point of view as a commissioner, I had Kent at the top of the list and I had 45 people that were going after him trying to top him. And I've got to tell you, after we went through the interview process, that Kent still stood at the top of the list. And so I'm real proud to introduce to you our new CEO, Kent Brenton. All right. I want to spend just a few minutes with you today to give you an up, uh, a briefing on or an update on the court. Believe it or not, I haven't done one over here in 11 and a half years. So uh, I've given briefings all over the, the state and the country and the world, but I haven't had my own city that I've had the opportunity to come back and talk to about what we've done at the port. I'm going to tell you, first of all, who we are. I'm going to tell you about the tremendous success that we've had here in the last uh, seven years or so. And then I'm gonna tell you about the projects that are on our uh, radar screen right now. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about what we're doing in Port Aransas, Texas. So first of all, we're an independent governmental agency. Uh, we're a large en uh, energy hub and a gateway to the global markets. We're a landlord, a landowner and a, and a land developer. And that's extremely important because we make our revenue two ways. We either lease land or we charge people to turn, take their products back and forth across our docks. And so being a landowner and a land developer is extremely important to the continued success of the port. We're governed by seven commissioners, three appointed by the city of Corpus Christi, three by New Aces County, and three by or and one by San Patricio County. I'm a New Aces County appointee. And as I say, I was appointed 11 years and nine months ago to have the privilege of serving on the Port of Corpus Christi. And I've had the privilege of being the chairman of the port for the last eight years. I want to tell you a little bit about you know, the success that we've had. When I joined the Port of Corpus Christi, uh, we were the sixth largest port in the country, and we had an annual revenue of about $50, $60 million a year. Today, we're the number one U.S. crude export port in the, in the country. We're the third largest export port in the world. We're the number one port by revenue tonnage. We're the number two LNG port. <clears throat> we're the number one strategic military port. We move over 7,700 vessels a year in 2022. 
And when I joined the commission, we had 48,000 direct, indirect jobs uh, affiliated with the Port of Corpus Christi. And today we've got 95,000. Our economic impact is significant. We move $400 million worth of goods a day through the Port of Corpus Christi. Uh, we generate $13 billion a year in New Aces County, $18 billion a year for our state, and over 65, I mean, over, uh, over $200 billion in, in revenue for the country. Uh, we managed 30,000 acres, most of which were, uh, is, 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 wet, is water. Uh, but the exciting thing is, is that in the last seven years, we've had uh, $65 billion worth of capital investment come into the Texas coastal bend. And for cities like yours, uh, that's important because they create tax base, they create jobs, uh, they help finance our schools and all. And so that's important. Our milestones, uh, it's kind of interesting when people ask me about that because for the last uh, uh, six years, we've set new records every year. Now we're setting new quarterly records and new monthly records. But since 2015, and that's an important date because that's the date that they lifted the oil, exp uh, the, uh, uh, oil export ban. And December 2015, the first vessel that ever went out of the United States that wasn't an American flag vessel came out of the Port of Corpus Christi, the, the TOT. <clears throat> well, we've had a 17 time increase in, in our exports. Uh, we moved 18 million tons in August of this year, which was a new record. We moved 187.9 million tons of, of product in 2022. That's compared to 164 million the previous year. We moved 49.7 million tons in our second quarter. And the interesting thing is, is that we're the energy uh, uh, capital of the country and really the world. Uh, back when we lifted the oil export ban, we moved 387 million, 387,000 barrels of oil a day. And today we're moving 2.3 million barrels of oil a day just out of the Port of Corpus Christi. This next slide shows that. Uh, there it is. On the extreme left there is when, when we were doing 374, uh, 373 barrels a day. And as you can see on the extreme right, which is August of 2023, we're moving 2.39. And, and the interesting part about this is that, that uh, you know, all of this energy is not just going in the United States, it's global trade. We, we take LNG uh, through the Panama Canal over to Asia. We take uh, refined products and, and, uh, and oil uh, to, to Africa and Europe and also around uh, Africa and to, into Asia. So you can see our, our oil flow. There, there's one more click on that. There it is. Or there's one more. That's it. But that shows our flow. And, you know, we're, we, we consider ourselves a prolific energy gateway. You know, we've got energy supplies you're all aware of with the, with the uh, Eagleford Shell and with the Permian Basin. Uh, we've got thousands of acres of land that the Port of Corpus Christi owns and we make available to uh, companies that come in and look at the coastal bend to do their business. Of course, Texas being a business friendly state, uh, people like to come down to the coastal bend. We've got a deep, deep draft port that I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in a minute, but we've gone from 47 feet to 54 feet, which makes us the most competitive port in the Gulf of Mexico. We're fortunate we've got a skilled workforce that helps to uh, bring this industry in. I love to brag on a and Corpus, a and Kingsville, and Del Mar College, because as we've gone around the world trying to bring companies into the coastal bend, we take the representatives from those three universities with us, and they try to find out what the, uh, the workforce needs are for that industry if they were to come to Corpus Christi or the Coastal Bend, and then they provide curriculum for them. And they've been an unbelievably great partner. If you see any of the trustees or the presidents of those universities, you need to thank them because they're responsible for helping to bring a lot of the industry into the Coastal Bend. That was the next slide. Uh, there are right, that what you about back up one. There we go. As I said, we had $65 billion worth of capital investment here in the last seven years. And those are just some of the companies that many of which you'll recognize that have come into the coastal band and spent tremendous amount sums of money in the coastal band. Our number one priority, uh, actually, believe it or not, since almost 1990, 
uh, has been the channel improvement project. When they opened the new Panama Canal, Linda and I were fortunate enough to be invited by the president of Panama to that opening. And it created a different class of vessel that was going to be coming into the United States and carrying goods from the United States. And there were no ports that really had the depth of a channel to take advantage of the larger ships. And so we decided, uh, and we were fortunate enough here in 2018, after walking the halls in Washington, D.C., I, I was up there twice a month for years trying to get money to make that project a reality. The eventual cost of that project, $681 million. When we started, it was $169 million. So you can see what time does uh, to the construction cost. Uh, we paid our share. We worked on the federal government to finally get the first dollars because they're obligated to pay about two-thirds of the cost once they spend a dollar. And we spent a lot of time getting that dollar. And we finally, after under President Trump, got $18 million, which started the federal government's involvement in this project. We were fortunate in this, this year that we were able to get the last $157.3 million uh, out of the president's budget. And uh, so that project is on its way to completion. But the first phase of the project, y'all have been watching this I've been in Port Aransas for quite some time. But the first, first part of that project was in December, awarded in two, December of 2018. We completed it in 2020. And that was from the Gulf of Mexico to Harbor Island. The second phase was to La Quinta. The third phase is under construction today and should be completed by the end of this quarter. And we were fortunate that they just bid the fourth phase. Uh, the bids came in uh, higher than, than estimated, but we were able to negotiate just uh, two weeks ago a contract to complete the fourth phase. And so we anticipate that that project will be awarded on December, September the 29th with a completion of this project in 2025. The completion of this project will mean that we now have the deepest draft port in the Gulf of Mexico. And that plays well for what we do with the type of vessels that we have. Uh, we have one of our primary concerns at the port is, is environment, environment. And we have an environmental planning and compliance department. We work on six environmental precepts dealing with air quality, climate action, water quality, soils and sediment, habitat restoration, and climate adaptation. As I said, we were a landlord port. And we're fortunate that when they do leases with us, we can incorporate these environmental in concepts or precepts into our leases such that we can enforce them. And then we're also fortunate, as you know, here in Port Aransas, that we have entities like the Coastal Bend Bays and Estuary that we can guide uh, potential customers to to help look at the environmental concerns that need to be addressed. Our future is is hydrogen. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about that, but you know, green energy is important uh, today. I don't think you can see a news article anytime, anywhere where they're not talking about global warming and talking about green energy. And, and we, we saw this a couple of years ago and, and we started looking, number one, to acquire land, number two, to educate part of our staff on what it would take to be an energy hub. And then we were fortunate that the Department of Energy allocated funds uh, looking to have uh, six energy hubs here in the United States. They took applications. There were 72 original preliminary applications. They parried that down to 26. They invited nine of us to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, I call it like defending your master's thesis. We had to go up there and defend our application. Uh, we hope to hear something uh, by the end of this month or early next month as to whether or not we're going to be able to get that. What that does is it would make almost a billion dollars available to the Port of Corpus Christi. It would go through us. It wouldn't come to us, but it'd go through us to companies that are looking to do green hydrogen projects or carbon capture and sequestration projects in the coastal bend. And like I said, we, we, we have spent... Uh, you know, some pretty good sums of money on that to try and make sure that, that we're a leader in that field. I would tell you that the commission that I serve with today, even if we don't get that hub, that designated as a hub, we see that as the future of the Port of Corpus Christi. And it's something that we'll continue to do even if we don't get the hub. But but we feel good about our application and the process. And uh, uh, y'all probably may have known him when he was over at the uh, 
transportation, uh, Metropolitan Planning uh, Transportation Company, Jeff Pollock. Uh, he was a planner. You know, we we uh, snuck him away from there over to the port, and he's probably the north most knowledgeable person in the country right now on this right now. And what we do is we're sending out a signal that we're going to look to play a role in, in carbon capture. Uh, we, tell, we look for new, pro, uh, new project partners to come in. We look at alternatives for delivery. Uh, we are, have poor space where they would store this, this product that, that we've made available. We're using our capital to, to try and help uh, put the proper infrastructure in place and to uh, uh, be able to take that component. You know, all of our industry has carbon that they need to do something with. And so we're trying to facilitate uh, taking care of that in a safe manner such that it doesn't get into the atmosphere. And again, you can see from this diagram that the, the, the hydrogen that we're going to produce, uh, again, goes to Asia and Europe, uh, Africa. Uh, you know, uh, some of the, those countries have been doing that for a long, long time. Uh, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about our activity in, in, in Port Aransas. We've got uh, four or five projects that most of you are very aware of. Uh, you know, we're, we're working on desalinization. Uh, we have a, a, a discharge permit for the product for a desalinization facility. We're in the process of trying to obtain the intake facility uh, uh, permit for that facility. Uh, we're working with the city of Corpus Christi, who is the purveyor of water. I've said for years, we're not going to build on or operate a, a desal plant, but we have told Corpus Christi that we would build one with them and help finance one with them to be able to meet the needs of industry and the population in the future. And those meetings are ongoing. Uh, we're, we're working to try. We've heard the, the words, take it offshore. I've probably heard that a lot in the last six or seven years. We know that the original permit we got was for 50 million gallons a day. That won't support the industry as it's coming in. Each one of these hydrogen plants uh, takes about four and a half to five million gallons of water a day. And I know in Robstown, where we've been acquiring land for hydrogen plants, uh, you know, we've got five or six companies that are going to come in. We, we feel like that are going to be real customers for the coastal bend. So water is a serious need. And uh, uh, we're working with Corpus. There's four sites that we're all looking at. Uh, we're, we're in permitting process. We are on this one and the one over at La Quinta and Corpus is one in La Quinta and one in the Inner Harbor. And we'll make a decision sometime in the next year or so. We've got engineering studies going now, looking at infrastructure. We're about to commence engineering studies to see the cost of the facility, the operating cost of the facility, and the ultimate cost to the consumers. And once those are determinations are made, we'll look at a site, but this is one of the premier sites for one reason, for two reasons. One is it's got ready access to the water, but more importantly, it turns over twice a day, 365 days a year. And if we look to take both the intake and the uh, uh, discharge permits offshore, which if we go to 100 million gallons, we'll have to take our discharge permit offshore. We'll amend the existing permit and do that. But uh, that's the way that my, my uh, commission looks at it today. And I believe that's what they're and what we'll end up doing sometime here in the future. We are still in the permit process for an offshore terminal at Harbor Island. Uh, I find it interesting that the average Corps of Engineers permit in the United States takes 150 days. The average Corps of Engineers permit, since we're so well thought of it by the administration in Washington, D.C., takes 250 days in Texas. And these two permit applications that we've got for our terminal are over 1,500 days, but we're still working on them. Uh, I've been asked a couple of things to talk about specifically. One was it's been suggested, I've had some people suggest it to me at port commission meetings that we give the city of Port Aransas the marina. And we've investigated that and we got the marina, if you're aware, from the general land office. And the document that conveyed the, the uh, marina to the Port of Corpus Christi says, if we get rid of it, it reverts back to the general land office. Dave's got a pretty good rate, I think, on the marina with the Port of Corpus Christi. 
the general land office doesn't give breaks on, on any of their leases. They do market value leases. And so I think it would be in our best interest in yours if we maintain the relationship that we've got today on the marina. But I do want you to know we looked at it. My legal staff has advised me of what that document said and, and potential consequences it could have to both you and the court. But, but we, we, we did look at it on your behalf. And then the last thing I want, I want to talk about is the pilings. Uh, I call them the pilings, whatever that is out in front of Harbor Island. Uh, we knew that there, there was a safety problem there. We knew that if we did were, were able to put a dock in over there, that they had to be removed. Uh, I tried to get the numbers today, but I couldn't click with my people at the port. They're pretty busy right now. But we had a contractor that we hired. He came in and, and pulled all the pilings he could, but some of them, it's suction. Somebody that's a, a scientist could probably explain it better than I, but they couldn't get them out. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've gone in with another contractor that are gonna bulkhead around each one of those, and then they're gonna jet those pilings out. And we've just gotten the permits to do that. And so uh, I, I don't know that we've let a contract to do that yet, but, but that, that will be happening fairly soon. Uh, you see five or six markers over there now. I know there's been a couple of accidents. We had people stealing our markers as we put them over there, then somebody steals them. And, uh, but we're going to get those removed. And, uh, and that, that's strictly a safety thing. And safety is at the top of our list at the Port of Corpus Christi. And so I'll tell you that I may not be there next year when it happens, but, but that is going to happen. Our last thing that I want to talk to you about is our commitment to our communities. Uh, under the water code, we're allowed to uh, take a portion of the revenues to Port of Corpus Christi. And, you know, we had a pretty good year this last year. We had about $200 million in revenue. We had about $100 million in expenses. Our EBITDA was over 50. And uh, I think any corporation in the world would like to have numbers like that. But we're fortunate that we can then take that out of that 200 million, a portion of that revenue and distribute it to organizations like Chambers of Commerce, Economic Deve De Development Corporations, but more importantly, to nonprofits that benefit the people that live in the world in the coastal bend. I know for a fact, because I've been involved with it, that they've, the Port of Corpus Christi has participated in the Deep Sea Roundup. They've been a big participant in the Police Foundation. They always provide me Ulster and spring break. I know my wife and a group of ladies and one guy uh, have a gardening program at the elementary school that I think is one of the best there is anywhere in the state. And the Port of Corpus Christi finances that program. Uh, we've offered to do others, uh, uh, but people didn't want us. And so we've gone other places with funds, but, but we have made some funds available here in Port Aransas. I would say that, that the Port of Corpus Christi would be receptive to additional funding if, if there's a request made. And, uh, uh, but we are proud of the fact that we are able to uh, participate with organizations and help them continue to provide much needed services to those that live and work in the, port, port, in the coastal bend. I wanna tell you, it's been a real pleasure to, to uh, be a port commissioner. It's been a real pleasure to represent this community and you. And I appreciate this opportunity to come before you and talk to you about the Port of Corpus Christi. And I'll take any questions if you have any. Well, thank you, Chuck. First of all, on behalf of the city, we appreciate the port moving over, the introduction to Kent, which is great. So hopefully we can continue this dialogue and these kind of conversations, you know, to, to have the communication that we hope to have, you know, in the future. So thank you for taking the time and, and coming over and giving us an update. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right. Thanks, thank you. Yeah, come on. Uh, <laughs> always hard to follow Chairman Zahn, but uh, I appreciate you having us here. Um, I did want to be here personally. I've met with several of you already. Um, you have my commitment to be as open and transparent as possible. So I will not be without mistakes or without fail. I'm happy for you to call me out on that when I uh, do or when you want more information. Um, you can reach out. We're going to work very hard to be transparent. Um, We've made missteps, um, particularly with this community in the past, and I'm hoping to uh, help us all work past that. Uh, a couple of things we've done, for example, um, previous travel policy didn't require itemized receipts on travel. I changed that on June 1st when I became interim. 
Um, and we're posting our check registers online now. So anyone can go out to our website and see every check that we that we write. And um, I think some of you have my cards and contact information. If you don't, um, it's on the website. If you have a question, seriously, anything, just uh, just reach out. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> some of you may know our community uh, relations head, Rosara Bailey. I think some of you do, so some of you wait. She you know what? Responsible for that last slide. Yeah, what chairman, oh. Zahn, what chairman Zahn said, and we look at the unique opportunity to give back to the communities that that we work in. We take open call outs twice a year, um, and Rosara heads that up. We evaluate all those um, funding requests that come to us. Uh, very similar. I'm on the board of the United Way. It's very similar to the process we use. There's a rubric. There's scoring. How much of that money goes back to you know, into the community, how little goes to administrative expenses, those kind of things. Um, the other thing I did want to follow up on that uh, Chairman Zahn said is um, we're working with you guys to schedule a uh, kind of a public workshop and dialogue about uh, pulling those pilings out at Harbor Island. I think right now we've got it on the schedule for October 18th. We had it on for October 11th, but right. uh, most of you were, were gone at that time. So um, we want to hear from the community and hear from you guys. And so we can explain what we're trying to do over there. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much. Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So item five, we're going to move on to citizen comments and reports. So at this time, I have two people signed up for comments. First will be Marty Phelan. <laughs> Uh, Marty Fallon, uh, 168 Five Dove Circle uh, or uh, Port Aransas. Uh, I was really hoping to get an update, a public update on a couple of things for transparency. Um, I know there's been a lot of issues with golf carts and everything on 361 and the speed and stuff like that. Uh, police Department, I know, has been doing a terrific job trying to crack down on that and uh, give us some in doing a great job. We see a lot of uh, patrols out there now. Um, I was hoping maybe to get an update, though, with, well, I'm sure you guys reached out to the state and maybe um, if we could get a status, maybe they can't do anything, maybe they could, but if we get a little update or transparency around that issue, I'd appreciate it a lot. And I'm sure a lot of other people would. Uh, the second one is an update on Beach Access Road 1B, also another safety issue. It's been out there now for a couple of years that um, the easement that's out there is about 40 feet. There isn't another Beach Access Road that's out there that's 40 feet. Um, there is infringement on it by Cinnamon Shores. If you drive it out there, you'll see the dog park in the parking lot on the, on the easement. Um, I would hope that uh, we could work collaboratively with Cinnamon Shores and um, come up with something. But I, uh, if we get an update of that, um, a public update of where we're at, even if you can't get into details, it'd be appreciated. And, um, you know, if there's resistance in that instance, I would encourage you to think of uh, maybe public, uh, I'm going to donate domain to uh, uh, take you get if there's we need more property or more space I think it's uh, well within the public interest um, to get that access road in sooner rather than later if we get an up, uh, update on that um, it would be appreciated that's it okay thank you all right it's Kathy Fulton Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, uh, Kathy Fulton at uh, 319 East, no, what, 619 East Avenue B. Um, okay, and I do want to say something real quick about the, the access road deal, which is two years, guys. Let's, you know, let's, let's move this. Let's get across the finish line, you know, throw the Hail Mary pass, whatever you have to do, but we just need to get it done. And there's no question we need the road. And I don't know what all this is, you know, why this is such an issue, because I already have it established that that's always been, you know, part of the terror market. So those tracks. So, so we have it, need to get it done. Stop messing around. Now, the only other thing I am going to say, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to disc Mr. Zahn, but I do want to make it clear there is no valid desal discharge permit for Harbor Island. 
it is not valid. It's still considered a draft permit. The EPA has got problems with it and that has not been resolved. And until they give their final stamp of approval, it will not be a valid permit. That permit is to discharge 96 million gallons of brine daily into the ship channel right here. But I do wanna make it clear the port filed or tried to file a intake application with the Army Corps uh, for what they call a nationwide permit and it got rejected. And the Corps told them you're gonna have to go back and file this the normal way, which means it would have to be put out for public notice and all these things. But what's interesting <laughs> about that application is that is to take in 312 million gallons a day, which would double the rate of discharge to 200 million gallons of brine daily into the ship channel. This should be concerning for everybody. And the only way that they would be able to do this 312 million gallons a day is with by constructing these a 14 foot tunnel under the Lydia Ann and under St. Joe's out into the Gulf, a 14 foot, keep in mind guys, 14 foot in diameter tunnel. We could drive our vehicles into this thing. That's how big we're talking. The construction impacts alone are huge. And that's what the Army Corps told, by the way, which is why they got rejected on that nationwide permit issue. I just wanna clarify, there's more going on here I, I appreciate what the port's doing, but there's more going on here than what's being said, especially about the pilings. There's more to that story. There's a whole lot more of that story. And I'm not going to get into that, but if you have any questions, please call me. I'm happy to divulge this to anybody that wants to know. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we're going to move on. Item six, executive session, section 551071, the Texas Open Meetings Act to meet with its attorney to seek legal advice on the matter in which the duty of the attorney to the city council under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the state bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act relating to Beach Access Road B. We need a Oh, they they start right down there. Okay. I was trying to say you go in. I guess you don't need from the from three sixty in. You don't need the sidewalks per se. You get for the houses. <laughs> so what, how, how much time we have? Yeah, we're going to cover. 
Oh, I know. They're already talking about going down. Who, these two? Oh, yeah. What? What's Why? going on tonight? It, it, Mark's afraid his wife's going to be hungry. Yeah, I'm not Oh, Lord. Uh, are you skiing this winter, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. You are? Yeah. Is Beth? Is yeah. Beth? She's going to do it? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to be on pins right. and needles the whole time y'all are gone. Yeah. She's got a new knee. I mean, come on. We're going oh. back to Utah. Okay. Are we all here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. City Council will reconvene into open session and may take action regarding the matters which are the subjects of the above agenda item six. Close executive session. We have no action specific to Beach Access Road B. However, we do want to take this moment to appoint someone to our working group regarding Beach Access Road B. Uh, one of the working group members was on the previous council and we haven't yet replaced them. So if we could nominate a third party, a third person, I'm sorry, one replacement person for that so we can get that person in, in line. Can I make a motion to appoint Mark Winton? <laughs> yes, you may make a motion to appoint Mark Wynn. Is there a second? A second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? You okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. With okay. That. okay. <laughs> You're okay Thank with you. that, right? Thank you. you are now. All those in favor? No, I'm teasing. Okay. Fran, please call the roll. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Me or more. Yes. Motion All right. Item eight, the consent agenda. There are several items on the consent agenda, including minutes and an ordinance. Is there any request to pull any item? I would like to pull like, item B. Okay. Item B. Item B. All right. Leaving everything else in the consent agenda, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item B. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? Fran, please call the roll. Councilmember Whitney. Yes. Mayor Millen. Yes. Councilmember Kruger. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Crawford. Yes. Councilmember Christensen. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. All right. Item B. So discuss and take action on the first reading of the ordinance amending the code of ordinances, chapter 23. I believe this is second reading, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. They, I was reading from the agenda item. Okay. Yeah, second, second reading, amending the code of ordinances, chapter 23, traffic and motor vehicles, article eight, golf carts and neighborhood electric vehicles, section 23302, license required fee, license certificate and section 23307, penalty, suspension or revocation of golf cart license, providing for severance reading penalty and effective date. <clears throat> okay, so I'll, I'll I'll cue this up real quick. So there were there's a lot of input on there's there's three items that are being changed in this. One is where the location of the golf cart plate is, which a lot of people weighed in that they felt that putting the plate up high. You get a couple issues with that. It's going to flap in the wind. Potentially people hit their head, cut their head on it. And the thought was, why not just have verbiage that says it just has to be, you know, the just like a, a plate on a, on a car has to be legible and readable <coughs> for X amount of feet. So that was one item that we need to discuss. The second item was the vanity plate that we use the same state's uh, rules and regulations on what a vanity plate can say, which I think is great. I think we wanna leave that alone. Then the third item was the violation issue being enforced against the, not only the operator, it was the operator or the registered owner of the cart or both. And I think there was a lot of people weighing in that, um, and, and I know I did reach out to Mike Morris about, the red light law, which was stricken, um, where you used to be able to ride through a red light and they would issue a ticket to the the titled owner of the of the car. And I think it was stricken because, you know, they didn't know who it was and it wasn't fair that the 
uh, ticket was potentially issued to someone who wasn't even driving at the time. So there's that issue too. So those two items up for discussion. So right now what's in the packet is kind of as it stands to begin. So we need to make suggestions for the third and final reading, correct? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any suggestions? Well, you want to make, you can potentially change it for right. the second reading. Okay. But, this but is the second. Then, then be approved for the yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Chief's here. Rick's here. Well, we're, what happened to Rick? <laughs> okay. Well, let's so, let's take item the first item D. So, what are y'all's feelings about the way it reads? Obviously, do you want to change that to remove carts? With roofs or canopy shall affix a license plate to the highest point of the back of the roof or canopy. So how do the paper plates work? They flap in the wind or do you just issue um, a regular plate, put it in the computer system, get it over to PD so that everybody knows what it is. When their vanity plate comes in, they turn in the other plate and they put their vanity up. I mean, you can't put paper plates up on a roof. I mean, if you put them on the back bumper or if people are putting them on the triangle. Well, that's a uh, that, that's the vanity issue. Okay. We, we, you, you could figure that out if you wanted to. Okay. But let's get to the Just chase, the which is normal plate. Do you guys like them up high or not? No, 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 no. There you no. go. There you go. <laughs> Chief, you've been outvoted. Come give us your Can input. Can you put them in the triangle? Not everybody has a triangle right. with that back. I don't put them in and the triangle. And they can't be up under. So here's, yeah. Here's the reasoning behind it. Okay. I mean, this, we're not just pulling us out of the air. So part of what, what we've done to help address the uh, uh, the golf cart issue, particularly on the highways, is, is we recently um, leased some, some automatic license plate readers. They When the plates are down where they're currently mounted, so golf carts are designed to be on the golf course, right? Not, so everybody mounts the plates and there's like a little cubby hole in the back where golf bags are supposed to sit. Well, that's where they mount the plates. You can't see them there from a downward angle. And we've borne that out through some testing with the, the current LPRs. So the theory is behind that is to put them up in a position where the automated license plate readers can read them. It's not been an issue. I mean, we're... Anytime he puts an ice puts an ice chest back there, or people sit back there and their feet dangle down, the, the current ordinance says it's got to be visible for fifty feet. It's not something we heavily enforce. We'll stop them, verify they got a got a valid plate, and, and move them on down the road. But I don't know if we've ever written an obscured license plate okay. citation. But we the only way we can get the LPRs to read the plates on the carts that are in the highway is to put them in a more visible position. Now, it may be possible, um, some further research, most golf carts have like a little brace behind the back seat with a lot of people hanging the, the triangle, and it may work if it was mounted on the, the furthest, most rear portion of the golf cart, but I don't know. I know it works hanging up high. So, but that's, that's the reason we, we asked for the ordinance change. This is just a policy decision on whether or not you want to use the LPRs to enforce the, the plates on the highway. But if we're not, if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna ticket, if we're not gonna ticket, and that's the next item, then you really kind of lose your you you really lose the reason for wanting to read golf cart plates on the highway. Because if we're not gonna ticket anyone, it's irrelevant. You're right. It's irrelevant if the if the readers can read a golf golf cart plate because it's not like real time where we're gonna you know so the dispatcher sitting there staring at the at the monitor and she sees a golf cart and she hey all you know attention all units you know golf cart approaching the airport and everyone converges on you know that's not what this thing's for so if you get to the next item and you guys decide hey we don't want to be ticketing people who we don't know are driving these vehicles, then the golf cart reading, the, the readers reading the golf cart plates is kind of a moot point. Right. And this doesn't impact our operations from law enforcement. It doesn't impact our grant to purchase these. This is just a policy decision. 
on behalf of the council, we've been asked for years to find out better ways to increase enforcement. And we, we brought this forward yeah. and, and have carried forward with it, but that was under a previous council. And if you all want to go a different route. I mean, the readers reading the golf cart thing was a kind of a bonus. I mean, the main reason for these readers is it's stolen vehicles. It's stolen. But like if you, if you follow the news, there was this four per, four person murder in Illinois and they caught him yesterday with a golf cart or not a golf cart reader, a <laughs> license plate reader in Oklahoma. Yeah. And, and it alerted the Oklahoma. And, I mean, close yeah. by that, that homicide we had involving the, the cooks from Port Aransas over in Ingleside, they mm -hmm. use LPRs in there to. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the purpose of it. So it's not, yeah. it's not so and much. It's not going to impact our operations yeah. one way or the other. This is just a, a policy decision on the council. And whether or not they want to use those automated devices to help them. Well, for that department. example given, would having the LPRs wouldn't it be make sense to have it anyway, just to read license plates on the house? Well, no, that we, we, well, we've got it. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's not going to impact our grant because our grant yeah. is for, okay. and that's okay. what we want them for. Yeah. <clears throat> We're just trying to figure out how to get the golf yeah. carts in it. So the golf cart deal is kind of a bonus, and if that's not a route that yeah. the council wants to go, it's it's probably easier on us because we won't have to follow. <laughs> Well, that, that was my next concern yeah. about moving the plates, right? So people, all these people that have had all these golf carts for however long, they're going to go get their plates and then they're going to go and they're going to go put it right back where they've always put it because they're not going to pay attention. And then you're going to have half of them on top and half of them in the bottom. And then, I mean, that, that that's up to obviously the council as a whole. I mean, ideally, it'd be great to have another tool to help, you know, recognize the the wrongdoings of the golf cart drivers who are on 361. <laughs> but God. if we don't want a ticket to Dave's point, you know, the people Register. who, you know, there's like, yeah, the registered well, owners, yeah, which I don't. Yeah, there's not going to be any teeth yeah, in there. Oh, yeah. no and if you want, you want to speak to that part also. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's hear it. This is nothing new, okay? We, historically, we, we cite registered owners for, for parking violations. Cars on, yeah. not parked. We use it in our STR ordinances where we hold property owners accountable for people that are leasing properties for them. Um, there's another example I'm old, I can't think of what it is, but there's three or four places where we where we already hold the, the owner of oh, the uh, the warning stickers on the golf carts. Mm -hmm. So even if, if you own a golf cart and somebody else is driving it and it doesn't have a warning sticker on it, as a registered owner, you can be cited for that. So this is not any earth shattering, groundbreaking. Yeah new new thing this is something that we we've consistently done um throughout our throughout our ordinances i mean it's not not broad but it's not not new either and um and it's really the only way because the the, the cart readers read from the back so even if you can see a person in there you're not going to be able to identify who's who's on the break of part so, yeah so that's the reason for that one so let's say one of Dale's golf carts is out on the highway and he's going to get the yes. citation. That's the person that's driving <laughs> on the highway. Well, well, I mean, so if they go out there and, and, and you see this person on the highway, then we'll you're going to give yeah, them the and ticket. We'll, we'll it won't. Issue the, okay. The, the ticket to the but that's not going to happen every time that exact way. And I know one of the, the concerns I heard was, well, it's going to show up. It's going to affect my insurance prices. This is a city ordinance violation. It's okay. not reported it's not. to the state. It doesn't show up on anybody's mm -hmm. driver's record. It's just a, it's just an ordinance violation that's reported locally and not reported to the state. But then can Dale, I mean, he's like, okay, this person yeah, got a ticket. I, I mean, I'm paying it. Can you then charge their credit card for that ticket because you're getting the citation. Well that's what happens when you rent a car. You go to Avis and you exactly. rent a car. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So I know I yeah. Okay. But in theory, I mean that you give Dale a ticket, then Dale's got to come to you and say what day, time was this, and then he's got to go back to his records and figure out well, his, the citation would, would identify the, the card by license plate oh, number, the date. the date, time, and location. Yeah. Okay. okay. So be but I mean it's pretty it's still easy. work. It's not as yeah. easy as yeah. I mean that person may have already returned the card. True. Three days before, yeah. you know. But they'll know the date and time. Yeah. Right. Let me ask you a question. If somebody gets a ticket driving one of Dale's carts or whoever's renting them, does, We're picking will he know that person got a ticket by any means or can that person keep getting tickets without the person that's renting knowing? Because, if you know, I'm sure if Dale's got somebody yeah. that gets a ticket every time they jump one of his golf carts, it's probably not going to. Yeah. Well, like Mr. Well, Parsons explained, it, is this probably not going to happen in real time? There's going to be a lag between sure. the time of the offense and, and and him being notified of it. So unless the person 
that's operating the cart comes in and says, "Hey, I got a ticket, you know, for driving gotcha. on the highway." He's not uh, on but if, He's but if that's the case, we already know who that person is, and right. it doesn't affect the the cart owner anymore. But the but the cart owner won't know whether that person got a ticket unless the person tells him. Correct. Yeah. They all fess up, Dale. Hmm? Do they all fess up? S some do. Do they? Some do. Well, I don't fess up when the carts come through. Mm. Yeah, some say, can you come pick me up? I just drove across the yeah. 61. And I got it pulled over. And I don't know how to get back. So <laughs> could you get a trailer and pull me back across? Okay. And I'm like, and they say, I'm sorry. I saw the sticker. You told us. That's what the contract I says. Still did but it. I can't I did. get across. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get caught. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. Can we just stop everybody care. from driving across three six so, like the cross areas? Like what do you think about this being a soft car? Can we just stop them? What is your thought? No, because that's curious. state. Is it? I think yes, you state law. the person for the moving violation yeah. and not after the fact. I was hopeful with the the readers, the cart, the, the license plate readers that if somebody was sitting there in dispatch and something went by, they would notify somebody there's a cart. But if it's all going to be recorded. It. Well, then there is a, I mean, real time, helps real time, it, a real time notification. It would save but, lives. The worst thing I want to do is videotape a cart for a couple of days going up and down 361. And then there's a terrible accident and people are injured and like, well, nobody told us and the city even had pictures of the cart with my kids going up and down 361. So my yes. thought was real time, even to the point of, hey, if it'll alert me that my cart is going down and reading, you know, we can jump on it real quick. But I don't, I don't know if that's the technology as it is today. Well, there's a way to do that, but each each individual license plate has to be entered into the would system. have to yeah right. put in. And, and even if it's not going to tell us real time or got a type signal, of vehicle going by, but it's going to be that by the after, future, after fact, but for now, this is what we have. I think for now and for January one, you don't ticket the car owner, so I would want that removed. In my personal and talking about doing that because um, that's what it. Would, and as far as putting it up at the top, if you're not going to ticket them, keep them where they're, you know, visible. Yeah. To the motion, the last one itself. It just seems unfair for take out D. Dale, who has all these no, no, no. golf take, carts. Take out D. the last sentence of D. Take out D and take out okay the other one. I don't. The entire D. Well, we already have. No, you just want to take out the bold. Right. The bold, right. the bold changes of D. Where so what's you, left is the old what ordinance. We, what we yeah. Originally so in yeah. other words, we don't need the revisions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Remove revisions to D, leave G, and remove. Um, well, you want to you want to leave the operator right, or is that already a violation of section twenty three three oh six? May be enforced against the operator. Period. May be enforced against the operator. Period. Right. But you just. But that's a revised <laughs> statement. So you just want to remove the revision. Right. The bold is what the revision is. Correct. Well, I think that whole that's thing's new. Oh, I hope they're taking people. Yeah, yeah you want to just remove pe period after the operator. Right. Period after the operator. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you, do, does. Fran, Rick, did y'all get those revisions? Somebody. Well, said? someone needs to really sit, call a motion. Yeah. <clears throat> Just making sure. D, the revisions. G. Bill, are you making the motion? Sure. I'm not. I make a motion to remove from section 23 302 um, the bold and underlying. In section D. Yep. And also the registered owner the of registered the owner. cart or both. So, Scroll period down. after operator. And in item F, after the operator removed the registered owner cart or both. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yeah. There's no 
Second. Right. Any further discussion? Oh. Brand, please call the roll. Councilmember Crawford. Yes. Councilmember Christensen. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Kruger. Yes. Councilmember Camilla. Yes. I got it. Yes. 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 Okay. Item nine. Moving on to items for consideration. Item C is a resolution accepting and approving the annual financial report for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, as presented by ABIP Independent Auditing Firm, directing the finance director to cause a summary of said audit to be published in the official newspaper of the city and copies of the audit placed on file in the city secretary's office as a public record as does directed by the provisions in the home rule charter. Are you so excited this is done? I'm so excited. This is going to be presented right now. <laughs> yes. We have Janet Pittman here from ABIP San Antonio office to present the audits for September 22. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you for having me here this evening to deliver the results of your 2022 fiscal year audit. So what's in the, your annual financial report, which is about a hundred, a little over a hundred pages long. Um, these are the items that are in the report, our independent audit report, management discussion analysis, et cetera. And we'll go through briefly each one of the subjects. So um, why do you do an audit? Well, it's to make sure that your audit, your financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And our opinion, which is starts on page one, is an, what we call an unmodified opinion. It is the highest level of assurance that you can get from your independent auditor. And it basically means that your audited financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. We are required to follow um, three sets of standards. One is the generally accepted auditing standards issued by the AICPA government auditing standards, which is issued by the federal government because you're a local government, you are, you are required to file, file, follow also the government auditing standards. And because you receive more than $750,000 in federal funds, we are required to follow the uniform guidance, which is issued by the Office of Management and Budget, again, the federal government. So what's in the management discussion analysis? There's a lot of financial highlights, which we'll go over a few overview of all of the financial statements that are in this document. Um, the government-wide financial, the fund levels, the fiscal, uh, the financial notes, some information on your capital assets and your debt. And then if you wanted some more information, it, it directs you how to re receive that information. So some of the financial highlights. This is on your government-wide financial statements, which are all of your funds of the city combined between governmental funds, which includes your general fund, which is your main operating fund of, your, of the city. It includes the general fund, the debt service fund, all your special revenue funds, and your construction fund, your and your business type activities, which are your enterprise funds, your gas, your harbor, your sanitation funds. So the governmental activities, um, oh, I'm sorry, their net position over the entire city is $100.1 million, quite a bit of money. Your governmental activities account for 76.9% of that. And the business type activities, um, it's $23.2 million. Now, that's not all unrestricted dollars. A lot of it is invested in your capital assets. So in the governmental activities, 39 million is unrestricted. Remember that's all your funds combined and your business type activities, only 677,000 is unrestricted. The other portion is either restricted or sitting in your investment and capital assets. Your net position did increase by 29.2 million during the year. The government activities accounted for 22.5 million. The increase was mainly in your sales tax, your property tax, your franchise fees, your hotel, motel, and um, also your grants. Uh, you had a huge increase in your Hurricane Harvey but dollars that you received last year in 2021. It was 10 million. This year it was 19 million. So there was a big, that was the big increase there. 
Business type activities had a $6.7 million increase. Uh, that was a small increase in your targets for services, but you also had some grant dollars that we received in the Harbor Fund. Um, in the gas fund, there was a transfer from the Hurricane Harvey uh, Fund for $4.9 million. Any questions so far? If anyone has any questions at any time, just stop. Me. So your governmental funds specifically, we'll set those aside because those are your major operating um, funds for the, for the city. Your total fund balance over all the funds was $54.4 million. <clears throat> your unassigned fund balance in the uh, general fund, which is again, meant to be for your ongoing operations in the city, was $16.7 million. Your general fund has about 18 months of operating reserves. I believe you have a fiscal policy of six months. So you have a very healthy um, balance sitting in, two, in your general fund. You also, in, the, that, in that $54.4 million, you've got some restricted dollars. Uh, in the construction fund, you have a little over $10 million that are restricted. Those are the bonds that you issued this year in 2022 that you probably have spent some by now, but at, at the end of 2022, it was $10.7 million. And then you've got in your economic development, your hotel motel taxes, you've got 6.6 .6 million. And again, those are restricted funds. Excuse me. So revenues this year, and this now I'm just talking about your general fund, were $15 million. It's a $2.5 million increase from last year. Your ad valorem taxes increased by three, a little over $300,000. Sales tax increased by 300, a little over $300,000. Your license and permits increased quite a bit by $740,000. A lot of that was your short-term um, rental agreements. And then the inter intergovernmental revenues increased by a little over $600,000. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so your expenditures in the general fund were uh, $11.1 million, which is only a $791,000 increase from the prior year. So the city's doing a, a really good job of controlling your expenses. Um, most of the increase was in your salary line item, which is, is normal. In your enterprise funds, your gas and harbor and sanitation fund, you did have some increases in the gas fund, $4.9 million. Most of that was a transfer, like I said before, from the Hurricane Harvey Fund. Um, the harbor fund increased by 1.8. Sanitation fund had a decrease in $10,000. Most of your enterprise funds, um, your net position is really in your investment and capital assets and your unrestricted balances are, are fairly small. In fact, in the sanitation fund, it's a deficit. Um, I believe the city's plan is to do a rate study yep. um, to get that unrestricted net balance a little bit. Just needs to be up a little bit. The last item that I'm gonna to speak to is your compliance section. We are, we have two audits, audit reports back there. One is on the, our audit of the government over the government audit standards. Um, if we had any issues with your internal controls, that would be in this report and we are pleased to report that we didn't have. Uh, no material weaknesses in control, controls to report. On the one um, uniform guidance is our audit over the compliance of your federal funds. Um, we audited two major programs this year, the Hurricane Harvey, the economic development grant that comes from the Department of Commerce. Um, we did not have any findings or question costs to report and all compliance items to report. So I would, that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Does anyone have any questions regarding the audit? 
I'd like to thank Mr. Parsons and also Darla for getting us everything we need to do our audit. It's quite an undertaking for, for them. Um, we pull a lot of information. Yeah. Darla, not there. <laughs> <laughs> she was being nice. <laughs> It we is know. a lot of work. Me. Hey, Mr. Parsons, I'd be like, call Darn. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it's not just looking at your checkbook no. to make sure everything balances. There's a lot of information, particularly with all the things that we have going on. So thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you, thank staff, you. Darla. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's going to be quicker. Quicker. <laughs> quicker. It's all right. Okay. Any questions? A lot. Yeah. All right. Hearing right. none. Thank you very much. Yeah, All right, we have them. Very good. We accept the audit. A motion approving and accepting the audit. I make motion to approve and accept the audit for uh, September thirtieth, two thousand twenty-two, fiscal year end. I'll second. All right, great. Any further discussion? Graham, please call the roll. Councilmember Kinkin. Yes. Councilmember Crawford. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Kinkin. Yes. Councilmember Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Item D presentation on the Alistair Street Park construction project located at the community center on Alistair Street from how actually from Miss Colleen. <laughs> no, actually, it's going to yes. be on Zoom, okay. but I'm just introducing Lane Olivio is on a call and he has some slides that summarize what's in your packets um, for the community center park. Alistair. So I'm here in person if you have any questions, but I'm going to turn it over to Lane if Zoom will cooperate. Lane's with half. He's the landscape architect who's been on this the whole time and was a part of our open right, space. Yeah, okay, oh, I hear him. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, turn him up a little bit. Slides just started. I'm going to share my screen and get the slides so started. Um, but this is just to open it up. This is with the community center park design on Alistair, uh, right next to the community center. Um, and this is, we're going to give you a quick overview of the overall plan and then some detail of what some of the shade structures might look like. <clears throat> so, what we're going to to plan on doing is uh, the parking lot just to the north of the community center is going to go away and we're going to add a new parking lot to the uh, west side of, uh, yeah, the west side of the east side of the lot, which will include more parking spaces. And in the main park itself, we're going to have, it's all going to be centered around the main event open space. Uh, we'll have a number of individual and or family type of picnic shelters um, or benches. We'll have a larger five to four or five person band shelter type of uh, structure. Uh, right now we're showing it on this east side, but uh, in the following slides we'll show you several other options we have for locating it on site uh, based on some shadow shade studies. And uh, we'll kind of finalize that here um, in the next, next round of, of design. Uh, against Alistair Street, we'll have a series of, of ferns, which will act sort of as sand dunes. Uh, we'll be planted with, with uh, plants that, that sort of mimic the sand dunes without necessarily being all sand. And part of that's to help uh, make sure that users of the space aren't accidentally uh, thrown into or near the street or have, or have very quick access to the street. On the north end of the property, we have a drainage swale that we can't really uh, pipe underground, and so we're going to turn it more into a, a, of a bioswale area and with a boardwalk across it. Uh, we have the opportunity there to do some educational signage if, if we uh, try to do that, um, but it's, it's uh, primarily for uh, getting across and uh, the, the site and acting as a, as a kind of a stopping point. Um, right now on the south side, we've got a park sign located here, but we, I've talked to Wayfinding, uh, the Wayfinding guys, uh, since we had this produced, and uh, according to their plans, it's probably going to end up being more over at the southwest corner, where this one thing we'll do is. Uh, 
um, or somewhere else uh, along Allister Street so that it's got visibility coming and going both ways on Allister. And uh, that is a pretty good, pretty, pretty much the summary of it, of the site. Although I will say there's a, there are three or four large utility poles that run right through here, uh, right through here, if you can see my mouse. Um, that we are proposing to get rid of, and we've been talking with the utility company quite a bit about that, and they are on board with that. For the shape structures, we've, we've got three main concepts. This is distilled down from uh, six or seven concepts that we had that we've uh, shown in the city previously. Um, but we have a concept here on the left where it's a combination of reclaimed wood and stamped metal of some sort um, with patterns in it that but we can still decide on, but are uh, <clears throat> reflective of some of the character around Port Aransas. Um, it's content two is, is also the same, sort of the same materials, reclaimed wood, uh, sand metal, but more of a an abstract uh, design on the back of different options for it, uh, where we're, we're, de we're doing more with a concept that deals with waves. I think it's from that. And then our third one uh, is a little more of a uh, sort of a less formal type of structure. Uh, still, again, with the reclaimed wood, uh, but with probably a, a lighter see-through uh, top, uh, which we may or may not really enjoy, but uh, as an option. Um, this is kind of a, a just a, a little more detailed look at at each of the each of the options. The first one, obviously, with the stage, we've got two different really options. We got a stage option, and then a smaller version of the same style that we would use for the picnic area. And in the small one, we'd only have one panel in the back, whereas in the uh, larger one, we'd have both the back panel. We'd have more more space underneath it, plus some other decorative elements to add to it. From a shade study point of view, if we leave, if we have it where it's shown right now, then um, at four o'clock in the afternoon, the sun will be directly in on anybody in that shelter. Uh, if we split it to the other side, of the other side by the sand dunes, then everybody in the shelter is is fairly well shaded, uh, but anybody out in an audience type of area would be looking almost directly into the sun. Another option would be to do a food here on the south end, closer to the community center. This one, this is one that I think is probably the, the better option so far, um, and that uh, nobody, either audience or anybody in the band show, would be looking directly into the sun. So, uh, and, you, and you'd have the background of the community center itself as a backdrop for the for the shade structure. Uh, Colin and I discussed earlier today about about Placing it on the other end, on the, north, on the um, where the boardwalk is, um, the shade is the shade study ends up being about the same. Um, the only difference being that your backdrop is the businesses on the other side of the street. Right, so that option would end up with a lot of sun right in the band's face. The existing one, the, yeah, the existing one where we've got it shown in the plan right now. Uh, at four o'clock in the afternoon, in, in the late afternoon, this all of a sudden would be right in the in the band space, exactly right. Which is probably a little more um, acceptable than having it in the audience's face because uh, a band, if they're playing any sort of venue inside, is going to be used to having spotlights and whatnot on the stage as well. Right. Um, and it, <clears throat> but if we can make it worse comfortable for everybody, that's I, I would prefer to kind of run that route if we can. But that's you know that's something we kind of need to need to hammer out here in the, here in the next couple of weeks. Well, I like uh, the comments about the residents facing the museum or facing facing the Alistair Street. Which one did you like, Tanya? Well, I just think that um, if the if the stage is facing like the residential area, that music's gonna 
so that way i think it makes oh it right 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 way. if the That's back the of it was to alistair and it was blasting out to the east oh yeah yeah but right. if you put it on eight or ten yeah. party on the, there's no sun and it could either go toward the museum or toward the ice cream shop. right right and that's kind of our thinking as well. We know, uh, right. And if it's on the ice cream end, if it's on the ice cream shop end, then which you you don't show up there. It's not one of those three options. Well, because that boardwalk is there. Yeah. Well, but you could still put it there. It. Okay. But you would. We could still put it there. You would have the, the sun would be more in the band's face and the sound would go towards the community center. Yeah. That would be right. okay. option. Just, yeah. I'm just thinking of the. Like your audience. Sharing the shop as opposed to the right so you're yeah on either of the north or south ends uh we end up having more music uh going towards the residential than we would if it was say location a uh where it's on the, on the, on the uh, west side facing due west. um oh, I, right I I'm, I'm on the east side facing due west um but it's not nearly as bad, not nearly as much as if it's on the Alistair side. Well, we'll have to put a little thought into into that orientation. Sure. Okay. I also had a question. Yeah. Are there any plans for uh, outdoor bathroom? I asked that too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, here's the this. here's the problem with the outdoor bathroom. The elevation over there is about five rick what would your guess be about five feet yeah, right so you're you're looking at bathrooms that would be required to be at bfe plus one so your bathrooms are going to be at nine nine or ten feet but we talked about before about adding them off the end of the community center yeah outside if they're going to redo the roof they might be able to take it down somewhere. you possibly could but i think you're going to spend half your budget on the bathrooms I got you. I just thought about plumbing and sewer and everything. Yeah, I it's feel like we need. Huh? What about sorry, those ones we looked at TML last year? Sorry, yeah, that, yeah. I, yeah. I asked them about too, about a, port, a just... more portable structure that could be raised that wasn't as expensive as building a brick and mortar. But to Dave's, when we were discussing it, I mean, you don't want a structure that's not windstorm certified, you know, and all right. those things, right? I mean, I think ideally, if you put a public space out there, which is going to be lovely, I think it's going to be a great addition, and you're going to have events, you know, you, having some kind of restaurant facility would be great, would be really needed, because yes. otherwise they're going to try to get the community center, they're going to be going to Kelly's restaurant, they're going to be going to ice cream shop, yeah. you know, so if there were a place that we could conceptually put it, and or a, a, a way to build it that, to Dave's point, also, you know, didn't cost another half a million dollars for a restroom because it has to be elevated and then that you know that would be great but yeah i mean i think i mean we know what the bathrooms that we've recently replaced cost all right right and um so i i don't know how much investigation that the how associates were, were able to do but if if there are a way to either do it there and or like maybe to joellen's point somehow tie on the existing community center building right um I, I don't know. I mean, we've discussed it with Colleen a little bit, um, and we discussed uh, possibly doing it as an addition to the building, but uh, we didn't get much much beyond budgeting, you know, preliminary budgeting. Uh, I have not gotten estimates for an addition, but I do feel like that might be the path of least resistance because of that base flood elevation and ramps and the amount of space that would take up. It wouldn't change this. I mean, if right. it was something right. we like did like to the existing community center, then that would be a, right. That space next to the community Just center kind of right. okay. Okay. So okay. <clears throat> it at a later time. But yeah. yeah, I guess that's something we can explore, right? Okay. I just think it's. Yeah, I mean, you. Yeah, you. We could. We could get the numbers on it. 
you could okay. move move forward with this and we yeah. could do a yeah. phase two Something where we, we come in and, later. and we build the bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. I want to get That's going true. on this. Yeah. Okay. Because the bathrooms basically where we had thought would be right in right. this in this blank space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'd come out all... eight feet, but it'd have a huge ramp system because you're you're getting up, you're probably having to I know a good elevate. Honor. Uh, could, together, but right? you couldn't. I mean, you couldn't use the existing ramp that's on the porch of the community center. That wouldn't Come qualify. Like if you, um, if you did an extension to the building. I, oh, yeah. Being a guessing man, yeah. and I and I could prove it up tomorrow. But I would think that the community. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would bet the BFE and the finished floor and the community center is non-conforming. Mm. And, and, an, and an addition is going to be, I, I bet you the new floor is, is a foot higher than what the community center is. Can you be held hostage by any events in the community center? Yeah, I, I think, I, I think the community, I think you're going to have varying levels of finish. I bet you the new bathrooms are a foot higher than what the, what this is. So you could have connectivity, but we'd have to look at it. Well, it, it, I think if we move on with this proposal, I mean, yeah, knowing yeah. that council, maybe the majority of council, yeah, what would desire, yeah, some kind of I outcome. mean, Colleen and her team have laid it out so right. that it's, yeah. it's, it's, we, we know where to do it can, and we've, and they've reserved, reserved the space for it. Okay. So cool. it's there. Okay. We can add it. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Right. All right. That was a segue. Okay. <laughs> we'll give it back to you. No worries. Um, I'm, that's about all I had. Uh, we, can, we can go over the other two concepts a little more, but um, there's just a little bit larger views of them. Uh, the, 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 in concept two, the individual picking shelter would not have the, um, the, the metal uh, patterning in the back. It would just be a pattern of from wood uh, paint. Um, and then <clears throat> three uh, concept three uh, both of them are very very similar in style uh, you would have a solid back for the stage area uh, where it's a little more open for the for the shade area and the, the picnic area um, and which you would have the picnic area would have a lot of room for wind to move the air to move in and, and through it and you know we would block some of that with the stage to, to help uh, the sound the, the sound if nothing else is the are the roofs um does sunlight come through them or, or are they water you know rain tight or is it a right. solid roof so no none of them are solid roofs um and part of that is 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 to help with wind load make sure that there's that the wind uplift doesn't isn't an issue um so you know as long as there's space for the wind to get through um the they're they don't have nearly the liability with High winds that you know that a solid roof does. That's really kind of what the direction we're going with those. Uh, raining, the audience is shaded, so the band's not playing. Right. Storming. So <clears throat> their equipment and stuff. It's getting good with that. So. We have that somewhere. The sorry. <laughs> kind of similar to yeah. Robert's point. If it's, it's yeah. got a covered stage. Yeah. And so just this last Sunset Sounds on Friday, they called it 10 minutes before the storm rolled in, where it's able to unload everything off the amphitheater. Okay. It's not like a theater production where there's you know right. tons a of equipment. Of They're bringing the bare minimum to just amplify and um, you know, hook up their keyboards and electric guitars or whatever. So um, it's pretty, it's bare bones, simple. Um, but I think I am curious which aesthetic you're most drawn to. And then I also think when Lane's saying reclaimed wood, um, he's talking about potentially reusing some of the um, historical structures that have been demoed in town. And so um, maybe that's something to keep in mind is that there will be, uh, there could be a component um, that the museum can then play on and say, you know, this is this structure, or this wood came from this structure and here's the story on it and it's this type of wood. And so there's kind of a cool interpretive um, feature that could be a part of this if we want that. 
I, I talked like to Corky story. already about it, and he he assures me that he that he's got plenty of wood, and that he knows where it all came from, so we can we can track that. And, yeah, I think that's a neat idea. Yeah. I like that. I like that one too. Reclaim wood. You like that one? Yeah, I like. But that one, that one doesn't have reclaimed wood. Three. I think they this all have some component um, of reclaimed. Yes. Still like it. Yeah, they all they all have at least some component of reclaimed okay. wood to them. Okay. This one probably like uh, one has one. maybe the most. Okay. Okay. But as far as location of picnic structures, aesthetic of the structures, location of the amphitheater or stage, um, that's what we want to make sure everybody feels good about. The plantings, the elevation, I don't know if everyone understood the dunes that he's talking about on Alistair. When we have like Santa events at right. the community center, there's kids running everywhere and right. there's no barrier between the grass mm -hmm. and the road. And so this was our request yeah. to create, oh, you know, it's not a fence, sure. but it's act, it's going to act as a barrier them. so that, you know, wedding guests or whoever aren't stumbling into the well, street. The toddler's not going to just they, they blend over. Yeah, it's, before it's, they get it's over the a nicer looking <laughs> right, like right. barricade. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. On the dunes, are those bushes or trees? So we'll have a mix of, of um, ground covers and shrubs and, and grasses and trees. Um, I mean, if we we're, got, we're in the process of putting together a plant list right now of what might what might go in that uh, for approval before we really kind of lay it out. If you got some trees in there and the sun sets, there'll be some and that shade would help. cast mm -hmm. into the lawn. Yeah. I, if, whatever yeah. goes in there as opposed to low stuff but right i'd like to see as many trees as possible i think that would be keep the a great yeah. streetscape yeah 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 did you say what's going to yeah. keep it oh yeah i mean we could put sand there but on a good south yeah. wind in the summertime they'd be blowing down the well, I don't, we have enough sand. Yeah, more I, I don't know that we're actually going to medical dune right not i get that no not yeah. a sand okay. not yeah. a sand right. dune. the feel of the no we're not okay yeah let's make an outlay of it like the shade, the stretch shade structures. Mm -hmm. It's neat. Lots of greenery. Mm. Okay, so do we need to make a decision on, on options? Do you want uh, us to, to give you direction on like which one, two, or three? Do you want them to be that specific or, or no? I think I let's I think for now for just now, digest just, it right? because we got a little time. I think we can. We 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 could even um, yeah let us play around with it a little bit what but I think sure. you don't have to choose tonight yeah I yeah. like the overall oh, we'd like you guys to I think it's nice think about the orientation of the of the music pavilion and then get back with us and weigh in on it and then we right. can take it from there yeah and then we'll run the traps on the on the restrooms okay you can thank you guys thank you Lane I appreciate yes. it yes thank you for your hard work thank you Lane. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you mm -hmm. Colleen. <clears throat> no, I'm excited about that. Me too. This next one's you, Colleen. Too. Yeah, item oh. E, resolution <laughs> amending. <laughs> yeah, amending the scope of services agreement with HOP Associates for the Community Center Park expansion to include electrical design for the general site lighting and exterior power receptacles, authorizing funding in the amount of ten thousand five hundred for additional services, and authorizing the city manager to sign all documents associated with said agreement. So this was not included in the original scope of work. It would cover um, any park lighting, um, lighting in the pavilions, outlets in the pavilions, electrical for irrigation or um, relocation of electrical utilities, things like that. So um, we're asking that this be added into the planning services. I should have cut, oh, Lane is still on the line. Lane, did I miss anything? I think he's gone. Okay. Nice. okay. Yeah. All right. Any All right. questions? I'll make a motion to approve. A second. All right. Any further discussion? Fran, please call the roll. Councilmember Are you going to? Yes. Chambers and Orange. Yes. Councilmember Trigger. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Crawford. Yes. Councilmember Christensen. Yes. Me and more. Yes. All right. Item F. Discuss and take action on FPLT 23001288 Palmia Beach PUD Unit 7. Thank you, Mayor, Council. This uh, this phase portion of the Palmia, Bay, uh, Palmia PUD 
It was approved in August of 22 uh, and is uh, fairly common. Uh, they looked at uh, they looked at the design and the, the layout and wanted to make some changes. It's well within the flexibilities <coughs> afforded of a, uh, affording uh, afforded a PUD because of the, uh, the type of development it is. This one, the best document to reference you to is just the red line changes. But what it does, it modifies some setbacks and in, increases some, reduces others, but adds a lot. Um, it, Pretty straightforward, uh, but it it we did uh, we did want to treat it as a as a new planning action and bring it back. So that's that's the changes. And like I said, the document is uh, the, the most pertinent is the red line changes. It just shows those. Uh, uh, as the uh, agenda item report says, all the uh, the utilities uh, responded affirmatively. Uh, so staff recommends approval. All right. Is there any questions for Rick or for staff? Hearing none, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? Fran, please call the roll. Yes. Councilmember Crawford? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Kruger? Yes. Chairperson Owen? Yes. 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 All right. Item G, discuss and take action on FPLT 23001290, Port Aransas Community Center, applicant, the city of Port Aransas. So kind of keeping in with the uh, discussion you just heard over the park plan, this basically takes the uh, uh, the uh, street, street closure and the county lot and, and basically incorporates it into the one lot that will become the, the park project that you just heard. So uh, once again, utilities responded affirmatively. Uh, I think you pretty much knew this was coming, so staff recommends approval. I'll make a motion to approve. No second. Any further discussion? No. Fran, please call the roll. Yes. Councilmember Whitney? Yes. Councilmember Kruger? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Crawford? Yes. Councilmember Christensen? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Item H, ordinance, first reading amending the code of ordinances, chapter 25 zoning, article four, supplemental district development and use regulations, division five, accessory dwelling units, ADU, section 25176, general requirements by deleting subsection seven in its entirety and the pro providing for severance reading and penalty and effective date. Thank you. Uh, this one, there's a note at, at the diocese, you'll have a, a, a change that I'll explain. Uh, we were directed again based on uh, regal uh, regal recent legal rulings uh, that a provision that we had in the uh, in, in this particular portion of the ordinance relating to uh, who could uh, the occupancy of the primary unit to be able to rent the other one was deemed unconstitutional and so uh, you directed me to bring back the change I deleted that in its entirety but what what I didn't in the and what you have before you was adding back in. The, the provision that, that existed prior to as number seven, which was, as you see on the on the on the correction there, that the ADU rental would take on the properties of the zoning district it was in. So the correction is there. I would I would uh, ask okay. that uh, I apologize for the uh, for that error, uh, but would just ask that you consider that as the first reading. I've made the change that will appear correctly in the uh, the second reading, but um, that uh, again should be referenced in any motion. Uh, to be incorporated in lieu of what is in the package, if that makes sense. Sorry. I believe so. Everybody understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any questions? Hearing none, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, with the addition of amending number seven, rental of an ADU shall be determined by the property's existing zoning district use regulations. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? Brand free solve the roll. Yes. Councilor Crawford. Yes. Councilor Chambers. Yes. Councilor Kruger. Yes. Councilor Whitney. Yes. Mayor Yes. 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 All right. Item I: Resolution authorizing renewal of lease agreement with the Port Aransas Chamber of Commerce and Tourist Bureau for the building and the property at 403 West Cotter Avenue. Legal description: Mustang Island, out of Lot 12, Block 141, in southeast part of Track F. Status address: 421 Cotter Avenue West and Avenue A West. 
property ID 2710324, three-year term beginning October 1st, 2023 to September 30th, 2026, setting terms and rent amount of $18,000 annually for said lease agreement, authorizing city manager to sign contract agreement and providing other matters relating to said contract agreement. I told I told Brad if you went in here, we were going to triple it. Oh, no. Well, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He requested a dollar. I said, no. A dollar. <laughs> well, it didn't hurt to try. Mm -hmm. This is no change in the amount from the previous agreement, yeah. right? Right. And it's triple net, right. correct? What? It's sure. triple net lease. So he's paying his own insurances. He's paying his own. No, we're paying the insurances on the building. He's paying insurance on his content. So we're paying insurance. Okay. So it's not triple net. It's not. Okay. Um. Yeah, he only covers his contents. So windstorm, property, that's all on us. We used to give it to them for free. When did we start Ooh, probably charging them about not not long ago? Maybe after Har Harvey, and we might have taken a reprieve. <clears throat> we did. We might have charged them have and then stopped. Yeah, and then went we back. We started again. right before Harvey, maybe two years before that, maybe about Because it was a dollar for a long time. It was. And it's been 18 since we started charging them. The lease we're in now is a two-year lease. It's expiring September 30th. And I cannot tell you individually. I didn't so run that the, trap to tell you what we're paying on insurance. Well, oh. this says that the policy amounts from right flood is 822. TWIA is 3792. Okay. So you have I got that from the executive board meeting. <laughs> anyway, I just asked. So... Oh, well, that may be what their, that's, that's, that's what their content, yeah, that's not what their we're policy. covering on that's building. Their we're paying more. And then he says no, that well, we also pay general contents. What? TWIA and what? TWIA and flood. Yeah, but that's not contents. Well, yeah, he said like there's, con also, contents? Mm -hmm. there's also a general a uh, contents policy, but that's the, yeah, TWIA does that's the flood and the TWIA. Yeah, they'll do. But we have like, TWIA uh, and real and personal on the, on the building. building. Amplex. And I did not pull those numbers because I wasn't even thinking about it. When did those insurance policies form renew? Routine. So our I've got it. real and personal property is October 1. Oh. And our windstorm is they June 14th. They don't have anything. It's a very strange prior. date, but June yeah. 14th at midnight, I think it's when yeah. they're general. I think it's June 15th. Well, but this started. is what the CVB pays is these, oh, these three. My conscience. But I can run those numbers and we can table and, and let you know in October what our what we are actually paying. But that's going to be too late for the lease. Yeah, for the renewal. You're not going to kick them out October 1. No. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> technically their lease would be over. Right. But yeah. Or we could put it on the agenda for next week. Well, just to give us an idea, it's not going to. Are y'all concerned with the chambers? not covering the, I mean, would you rather it be some kind of triple net or, or are you fine with the current policy, current lease agreement, $18,000 a year annually, and we pay our own taxes and insurance? I mean, that's the real question. Taxes is right. Exactly. Right. right. I mean, What's triple net? Bigger. I'm sorry. I'm Tri but, triple net is where typically on a lease, if it's a triple net lease, you obviously pay your lease amount, but you also pay the taxes and the insurance. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so you may be the you may be the lease but right. but when the owner gets their bill for the taxes and the insurance they hand it over and you pay, pay it okay. right so you're assuming the liability okay. yeah the yeah and, and repairs and then there's you know so um obviously i mean when they have something gone wrong yeah, with the building true. they come to us say the ac's out right mm -hmm. or something like that yeah. wow Unfortunately, well, right now it's building. a pretty darn well, new yeah. building. So, yeah. <laughs> Same thing when you know, I least just set my salon. Yeah. It was our first one that was rebuilt, and that's was completely torn down, completely rebuilt. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so the AC units and everything are fairly new, but they are Five, six right now. years. Yeah, you could add the is, you could add the in, insurance on there as the part of the lease agreement. Mm -hmm. Just say that the eighteen dollars a year annually, eighteen thousand. Eight minutes, excuse me, eighteen thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> a year annually, and the tenant pays the property 
insurance. Property and windstorm insurance. Reimburses the city mm -hmm. or pays. Yeah, we can do that. It's up to y'all. I like the concept of reimbursement because at least we know we're doing it and getting mm -hmm. it insured mm -hmm. and then passing on the expense to the. It's typical right. in the lease. Mm -hmm. Just need to know those amounts, baby. Or is it not? Probably not. I mean, how's that I, typically done, Dave, at the Chamber of Commerce? In I don't know. <laughs> oh, they, I've never been in a city that's provided that. Gives a chamber a building. Okay. They have their own building. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Usually. So this has been this way since mm -hmm. so, since that building began. So I mean, yeah. I mean that building used to moving on up. House in the West, isn't it or no? What's that? House was that one? building built for the chamber originally? I don't know. Wasn't it the old city hall? It was the old city hall originally. Yeah, I was gonna say like a Before long time ago it was. Built. Yes. So that's probably when we vacated and moved, then they they moved they up moved there in. to get them, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, the majority of their budget comes from hot tax. So, mm -hmm. correct. It's, you know, a lot of changes. Hot tax That's a hot tax, probably will pay for I mean, not out of our general fund. It probably comes from facilities there. fund, which hot partially, tax pay for I was going to say, which also comes for hot tax. So, it's going to come out of the same hot tax. But the general fund gets reimbursed right. for their rental. Okay. Right. That's where the revenue goes. Um, for the lease, for but the lease, the insurance, but not the insurance comes out of the hot tax facilities fund. Correct. All right. So you're just it's like a moving shelter. the money. Yeah. Just just yeah. Yeah. You bring them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was completely it is. legal. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I missed it. Let's, okay. Five grand. Yeah. Um, okay. So okay. do we have a motion on the existing? Resolution. I'll make a motion to approve the lease as it exists now. With the addition of triple net. Well, it won't be triple net because the taxes. Okay. I'm, yes. No, I'm, no it's her, her, as her, her it's, motion as her presented. Her motion was as, as it is recommended right here. I'll second that. Okay. We'll change it. We'll change it after the. Terms up in three years or a minute. Sure. Yeah. There we go. Well, Since they are, so this is kind of already what they're looking at. This is, so this is they're not they're here to, they're, planning, they're not right? here to represent themselves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Fran, please call the roll. No. Councilmember Crawford? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Cougar? Yes. Councilmember Whitten? Yes. Councilmember Whitten? Yes. Councilmember Moore? Yes. All right. Item J. Resolution authorizing and conveyance of an art statuary step, okay, of a tarpon created by Danny O'Dowdy to the Port Aransas Preservation Historical mm -hmm. Association and authorizing the city managers to sign all documents associated with said <laughs> conveyance. I'm just here to we found a place question. for it, right? The museum Somebody wants has it. graciously offered to accept the um, tarpon sculpture statuary, and um, they are going to attempt to preserve, try some preservation techniques to extend the lifespan of it, and it will live over at the Farley Boat works facility on avenue a and yeah. right we we think right the proposed locations right uh here's farley boatworks to the top i think they're looking at right in here correct colleen yes cool i like this idea. and we have the uh, means in place where it could go as soon as tomorrow morning oh. if approved oh so we bought a we need to move it tomorrow morning. Wow. I would like to do it before the end of the fiscal year so that we have budgeted funds allocated to do this. <laughs> okay. okay. That's um, a good point. Yes. <laughs> and um, uh, France cleared it through legal with how we are going to transfer this. And it took a little bit, but we're sneaking it in right before the end of the fiscal yeah. year if approved. Um, they are, museums, museum is prepared to accept it. We have um, a tree, a desert willow, which is a purple flowering tree 
that will live in its place until the renovations of the area are finalized. So it won't look like bear an empty yeah. space okay. is it the big tree calling an eight foot tree we're not trying to plant eight a two foot, foot tree right? it's not a ficus thank you <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty ficus. desert willow which is my ficus flowering. probably will do real good out there yeah. eight yeah. Tree. you know i honestly <laughs> i have not laid eyes on it yet i probably should um but we picked a species that was very pretty and hopefully we'll fill the space nicely so I okay. was at the ceremony when that tarpon oh, was brought in and dedicated. Wow. My mother was on the sesquicentennial committee, which erected the tarpon statue. We have a little miniature statue. Oh, Well, she has one at her home. They gave little commemorative miniature statues. The artists made a bunch of them for oh. the people who were on that committee. So um, I'm, I know it's, it's time fun. for it to move on, but I am glad to see that the museum has graciously accepted to keep it and yes try to keep it i think the artist's as family history. is also yeah, happy yeah, about this that's great. So i love that it's not just yeah you know going, going away yeah. it's it's gonna live on and i agree um it'll open up some space to beautify and modernize the front of the civic center as well so oh, hopefully right. it'll just keep getting better we're gonna put better. a big so, marlin yeah. there because we are the, the Puerto Rican fighting Marlins. <laughs> That's what it's yeah. Like. yeah, we need. We're a, not selfish, Dave. Thank you, Kelly. Like. Okay, all right. I'm is there a motion? motion to approve? Thank you. I'll second. <laughs> all right. Any further discussion? Fran, please call the roll. Yes. 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 All right. Come on up. Thanks for patiently waiting. Hello. Thank you, sir. Everyone is doing well. Here to give you a quick update. One of the reasons I came into town, I'd lost a bet and I had to pay a debt earlier in the week. Uh oh. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. That's fine. Anyway, as you can see, two dollars. Two dollars. Okay. Almost like a dollar. <laughs> anyway, I lost. I'm sure everyone has. Uh, experienced the vibrating that's going on over at the public safety building we're putting the piles in mm -hmm. getting that ready to go so as you can see that's going i think the ribbon cutting ground breaking kind of is going to be the 13th 13th yeah so that's already in the schedule yeah i can't be here the fire station is the fire station we're still waiting on arbitration they threw some dates out we couldn't hardly meet those dates so we're waiting on the next batch of dates to come out and make sure that the city it was tml is available. of course so, oh of course uh the bulkhead project, as you can see, it's ongoing. Uh, the sidewalks are going in, your four foot walls going in. Uh, we had to go back and, and check some rebar measurements. That's one of those cutouts you're going down the bulkhead. So, uh, I think the next thing is the Nature Preserve Boardwalk, still waiting on FEMA, getting it through their EHP, whether they can reuse their biological assessment or not. And that way, once we get that cleared up, then we can get the core permit and get started. Uh, gas distribution system, you know, we're meeting uh, every week on it. I think we're going to push it back to every two weeks starting next week. We'll have a meet on Tuesday and then I'll push it back to two weeks. But we didn't have any issues as far as restoration uh, at the last meeting, which was Tuesday. So our meters are still not due in until October. So we're still on hold for some, some materials. Uh, Harbor Master Office got a lot of rough ends going in. HVACs being roughed in. Uh, your fire piping is going in, also a lot of electrical, and they're finishing up with the roof system. Uh, the public works garage, I have Jack Judy, who is the broadest estimator, doing some estimates on some of the original drawings that Turner Ramirez has completed. I just need to get some firm maps that I got from Nicole the other day to make sure we had the right elevation and what that cost was going to be. So everything's moving, and he doesn't see we got progress, so. I think you're going to probably discuss the Charlie's Pasture Pier ribbon cutting. Yeah, we're going to up we're working on a day. Parking lot. That. Yeah, that'll be. Good. Any questions? Any questions, Julia? Good to see everybody. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah, good evening. We're getting towards the end of those projects. All right. Item L: Discuss and take action on rescheduling the November 16th, 2023 Raider City Council meeting to November 9th, 2023. Right, we had a little discussion about maybe moving that November meeting around, and one of the dates that was mentioned was November 9th. Is that still a good date for everyone? It is the day before the 
Veterans Day observed. So that next Friday, City Hall will be closed. Um, it is Veterans Day observed. Veterans Day is, of course, is it's Saturday. I'm good. Um, and there was mention of maybe trying to schedule that at, at possibly 3 p.m. Oh, that was, that was Chuck's decision. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Main thing is we need to pick a day. So how does the how does the ninth work for everybody? I know it's probably not going to be perfect for everybody. It works yeah. for me. So. Okay. Good. Ninth at three. Ninth at three. Yep. Yeah. I won't be here that whole week. So. Uh, <laughs> zoom. I'll zoom. I'll zoom. We'll zoom. Okay. 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 All right. On the Ninth. They take an actual roll call, right? Okay. So I have a motion, please. I'll make a motion to move the meeting to November 9th at 3 p.m. I'll awesome. second. Okay. Oh, you say, I'm not going to be here, here, so I'm certainly not going to right. second it. Any further I'll discussion? I'll agree to it, but I'm not going to second it. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, Fran, please call. <laughs> yes. Governor Crawford? Yes. Governor yes. Chamber? Yes. 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 All right. Item M. Resolution entering into an interlocal agreement with the Coastal Bend Council of Governments for E911 public safety answering point services and directing the city manager to sign said document. Is this you, Rick? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There were too many big words for PD to handle this. <laughs> Uh, it's this is pretty straightforward. This is an interlocal agreement uh, for the 911 services. Obviously, there's redundancy involved regionally, and this is just our participation in the uh, in the public service access points. Um, it's it, the cog requires there be interlocal agreements in place. That's a, that's all this is, uh, Chief. Just remember, there are some things I sent over that uh, some PD specific questions on this that uh, you'll have to answer uh, if it's approved and take the sign. <clears throat> okay. Does anybody have any questions? No. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? <laughs> Brian, please call the roll. Yes. Councilmember Cougar? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Crawford? Yes. Councilmember Christensen? Yes. 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 Item N, resolution authorizing an extension to the short-term rental inventory registration compliance and analytical services contract with GovOS for a two-year term ending October 31st, 2025, and then authorizing the city manager to sign said contract documents relating to software services. So two years ago, we went out for an RFP for STR software registration, hotel motel tax billing, the complaints, et cetera. And we awarded that contract to GovOS. That contract is expiring October the 3rd, I believe it is, or October 31st, maybe. Anyway, we'd like to extend another two years with GovOS. I think um, we've gotten through the learning curve of using it. We have our STR person on board now and um, recommending to continue that relationship. No increase in costs, still 132.910 for the next two years. So staff recommends approval. Any questions for Darla? Amazing. There's no increase in cost, right? Um I'm gonna make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? Brant, please call the roll. Councilmember Crawford. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Whitney. Yes. Councilmember Owen. Yes. Councilmember Yes. 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 Item O: Ordinance, first and only reading, amending various fund accounts for fiscal year 2022/2023 budget to reflect changes due to increase in revenue and/or expenses as authorized by the Home Rule Charter, repealing all prior ordinances in conflict here within, and providing for an effective date. So if you'd like me to go through all of the um, changes, I can. They are in your packet. Went through um, a lot of these as the years gone by. You approved different contracts. So this is just putting them in um, <clears throat> in form to cover that. I did want to point, if you want me to go over them, I will. But if not, I just want to point out a few things. Um, 
in the general fund, I did put a transfer in there to street maintenance, um, the street maintenance fund we have. We haven't transferred money over there for a couple of years. So I'm, we, we're performing so well in the general fund to go ahead and transfer approximately 448,000 over to the general, um, to the street maintenance fund, especially all the interest we're earning this year. And of course, um, hotel motel tax performed so well this year, it has increases to that to go to the hotel motel special chamber. And the beach fund, we have quite a bit big increase in that because the lifeguards for the first time ever really upped their staffing this year. And so we needed additional funds passed beyond what was budgeted. Otherwise, any others I can discuss if you'd like. <clears throat> you have any questions? Any other specific questions? No. Okay. All right. I'll second. Any further discussion? Grant, just call the roll. Yes. 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 Okay, we're moving on now to 10, which is staff reports. Come back. You missed T. Um, you have the written report in your packet. Of course, um, was not quite finishing out the year, but our um, hotel motel tax for the month of collections in August, it's actually for the month of July, was down about 17%. But if you compare that to any prior year, we got about 2.3 million, still performed very well. We're up 13.6% for the fiscal year to date. And the um, services Brett subscribes to, he wasn't su surprised by that dip. I know Cinnamon Shores was up, but some of the others, I guess, were down. And until we get through this whole first year of the STR program, as I've told you, I feel like last year, some of our collections in August, some of those property managers were just getting onto the system. And I'm not sure if we're comparing apples to apples for all months. Uh, so true. I like to focus on that fiscal year to date figure of 13%. Our sales tax for um, that same period, conversely, was up around 10% that we get from the state. So yeah. just let you know that number may be a little skewed by what we were looking at. But if you have any other questions about anything else you'd like to discuss. Anybody have any other questions for Darwin in particular? Okay. Good job. Right. Thanks, Dara. Excellent. Congrats on being through the audit. Yes. Yay. Start a new one. Yeah. <laughs> Start a new one. Start a whole new year. Lawrence, please make your way to the podium, sir. All righty. I will go over items that have progress or changed slightly, but if there are any questions or anything we want to discuss, just stop me and we'll go through those items that are on your mind. Start with animal shelter remodel. The Gulf Coast Humane Society has recently advised they are willing to help uh, provide animal care services for us, uh, also veterinary services. This will be uh, free services, and uh, we will also uh, work together on our online resources. They have um, ways of getting animals adopted and showcasing what those animals are. It almost looks like a Brady Bunch type thing with a bunch of animal heads. You know, they put that out there for the public to see these animals and see their names and that sort of a deal. So we'll work together on that. Um, but uh, they were very happy to help us. And I was very impressed with their facility and their staff. So this is, a, I think, a, a good move forward for us to uh, work together. Uh, Charlie's Pasture Shoreline Pier. The handrails have finally been installed. Finalization took place on the 14th. Uh, the pier and ADA ramp have passed ADA inspection. A soft opening happened on September 14th, and we're going to need to schedule that grain opening as discussed. Also, the asphalt and ADA parking spaces have been installed, and it looks great. It looks really good out there. The only thing that's left to be done is they're going to pour a little bit of concrete in the front. Um, 
kind of where you enter into the the facility off of the street right there there's going to be a strip of concrete uh that's not installed that will be at some point but we can proceed with the grand opening Charlie's pasture shoreline bulkhead 45 percent complete Contractors continuing to install, install rock revetment and those improvements along the northern water side of the uh, bulkhead. They're also continuing to build out the sidewalk and extending the wall from the piers towards the original blowout section. They have finished pouring the new bulkhead caps and that spillover section is now poured at the original blowout area located to the southwest. Uh, CDBG hazard mitigation drainage fund, that's through the GLO. Um, all of that has been submitted to the GLO. They have now uh, put out bid and, and they are inviting um, people to bid on that project. It's set to close on September 28th. And that's for phase one of the project. There will be a phase two to come later. And then additionally, there is a, a third pot of monies. Well, really a second pot of monies, but the third uh, project, if you want to call it that, uh, that still in the works also. So we're going to be doing a lot of outfalls at some point. Uh, fire EMS station, civil plans for the Ninth uh, Street Alley and civil layout for the Public Works Fire EMS lifeguard buildings are completed. We are waiting on FEMA to, uh, well, we're waiting for an arbitration date with FEMA. That has not been produced yet. Gas distribution utility system, 25% complete, still looking at 25, 2025 before completion. Contractor currently working around the Lantana, Station Street areas, and also Trojan Street, kind of in those various places. <clears throat> Harbor boat ramp. Mako has started demolition of the middle <clears throat> divider cap. They have poured the concrete cap on the most southern uh, boat divider. Um, that cap was also demoed, of course. They are looking at completing that project September 30th. There were some delays. We're having delays on uh, delivery at Timber. Um, I think we were discussing that last time. We were like, where is Doc 12's delivery at Timber? Well, that's what happened. Yeah. But uh, they're making a lot of progress. It's looking good. They're starting to move now. Um, Mako has been a little behind on our projects, but that's something we're going to be addressing with them soon at close out. Good. Harbor bulkhead cap repairs, uh, demolition of the sidewalk has occurred. Installation of new fabric is underway. There's a filter fabric that lines that wall to keep the uh, uh, soil in place. Uh, temporary tieback system has been installed. Forms of rebore have been set. A portion of the cap is been poured, and another portion will be poured next. That is looking at being uh, completed September 30th, also. Doc 12 reconstruction. Uh, as mentioned, there were material delivery delays. Pilings are now set, framing and decking of the dock are ongoing. Scheduled to complete that on September 30th. Dock 11, Bellingham is the contractor that was awarded. They've notified the city recently that they will not be able to begin on our um, their previous date that they issued, but they're still within our contracted um, 180 uh, range. Days. Yeah. yeah. So the new date now is going to be October 30th is when they're going to start. That'll be after the Harvest Moon Regatta. Proposing to finish November 24th. Um, their story was they had a project manager quit on them and kind of a lot, a lot of things fell through the cracks when that happened. So they kind of sent a, a, a letter of explanation and not excuse in their terminology. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Harbor, Peggy Ann, dock configuration, pilings have been set, demo complete, currently framing. Harbor master uh, building a pavilion, exterior foam board installation and sheathing are ongoing. Sheetrock installation has now started. Demo installation, a new wood framing ongoing at the pavilion, bulkhead excavation and shoring still ongoing. A Harbor fish house remodel, the contractor began work Monday. Uh, they've demoed uh, some of the internal portions, framed the windows, frame new cleaning tables and they are scheduled to paint tomorrow. Paradise Pond Boardwalk Extension, that project is now complete. That's again Mako who was over that one. Public safety building. The so building it's all it's all they got all done. The trails, everything. We finally Good. closed it out. Okay. Ooh. Yep. It's now open. Man. Yeah. And, and honestly it should have been open sooner, but there were again delays. And that's yeah. why I mentioned Mako. Yeah. Uh, 
I hope they're not watching. But... <laughs> so... <laughs> No, um, let them, let you know, them. they had to redo the uh, asphalt a couple times. Yeah. Um, then there were delays in September. But it's open now. Oh, okay. It's open. And go, people not. I'm going to go walk back there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. um, public safety building. Building pad is complete. Concrete piers are now being drilled, formed, poured in conjunction with the rebore. Um, this is all in preparation for pouring a slab. And that will be coming next. Robert, yeah. It is exciting. Yes. Yeah. Roberts Point Park bathroom remodel. Um, this is for the restroom facility nearest the fish cleaning house. You know, we're doing that one first. And once that one's completed, then we're going to go to the one near Harbor Master. Um, partition, part, new partition doors are in, new toilets are in, urinals, sinks, water fountains. All of these things have been installed. New wall tile, new floor tile. Looks really nice in there. It's looking really nice. Um, EDR did a good job with tile selection. They're the ones that I think remodeled. Yeah, they did. Oh, the, yeah. okay. She's pretty creative with her colors. It's a nice scheme. <clears throat> uh, street drainage bond uh, package bid went out, but we quickly delayed it due to a few last minute additions per an addendum that was issued. We've added JC Bar Boulevard and Knife Street. Um, should be ready for rebid in two to three weeks. Uh, Recreation Center RFQ ad went out last week, looking at a October 19th council award. And finally, wayfinding signage RFP ad out today, estimated project cost at 1.5 million. Any questions? On the Harbor Peggy, the configuration, it just says to be funded. Is that going to be? On which one? Uh, the, uh, the Harbor Peggy Ann dock configuration Peggy. that's taking place right now. It just it just says to be funded. I didn't know. Which oh no, that was through. You guys already approved that. That was funded through a. Um, you guys approved that back in June uh, or May. Uh, June. Yeah, it will be coming from the Harbor uh, Fund. And the oh yeah, the cost is right there. I just need to change that terminology. Thank you for bringing that to my. Oh no 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 worries. Yeah, no, I just uh, all the stuff that you. All this detailed information you put together. So you back out the street drainage bond, you're talking over $75.7 million worth of projects. And then you add the, the 6.5 million bond, it's almost 82.2 million of capital projects listed on that report. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Town of well, less than 4,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty amazing. It's, it's my great beard. <laughs> yeah. It's your great beard. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. We're still. Yeah. And you got a good thing on the audit. That's right. It's all, and all the funds are accounted for. Good job, guys. I know. Well, thank you. That's amazing. Thanks for the area around here. Yeah. Mm. Very great. Yeah. This yeah. is uh, the town of progress. That's right. <laughs> thank you very much. Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. Appreciate it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks. Uh, let me let me lead with uh, if you guys have a couple of minutes, Peggy should have everything staged. But uh, we just wrapped up the Civic Center audio improvements in the video. So, like I said, if you have a couple of minutes, we'll run run in there real quick, and uh, I'd love to show you. Yeah, how, the sound. Uh, that's yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's it's great. All so, speakers. Be, tape is going to yeah. be so. so oh like man, said, so happy. It, it's all ready. So if you guys have a couple of minutes, we'll just run run over there as you head out. Um, I wasn't quite sure. I just need some guidance on this update on the golf cart rental company storage i i didn't have any uh oh, i just saw I that just, but i was that what i said they yeah 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 called it golf cart junk yeah anyway. junk yeah i was not i, used I know to thank you for doing that but you know what i meant yeah well it's i don't have a problem with i love golf carts okay it's just all these storage units it seems like they're just it's golf cart graveyards like i mean it sounds like all the dead golf carts are going to storage units and they got them piled up like a bunch of them and then i mean are storage units to be stored inside or can you just store all the junk on the side of these places or? it's not really it's not really specified if, if <sighs> since the parking requirements kind of are non-existent for the storage units like i guess it's like the boat barns yes it, it, like it, avenue a is really it, it's really between the uh like i said what the owners of the storage units will allow, but they're all in a commercial two zoning. 
now there is some screening requirements. So if you have some specifics, we can at least require that, that they be screened from public view. Right. But as far as them no, being I, there. I yeah, shoot us some ones that you're, that yeah. so we can go look at them. And, and there's, a, there's a few golf cart lots, you know, where they do rent the golf carts out that have, like, are building their own graveyard, you know, like the trailer full of tires. I'm sure those people are sick of looking at that. And some other junk there. I mean, can they just put a fence around there? Or yeah, get, just get, get, yeah, just stop by and, and let Carla or I know the specifics, okay. and we'll. I mean, I just they can I'm at least that make just them gonna, less less. Uh, they can make them more aesthetically pleasing because we do have some screening I'm just rules and regulations. Yeah, tires are going to keep store tires. I mean, they're going to. And they can take them out to the collection station. They they charge, yeah. but we can they can. No, dump look, the tires. exactly. So some of them told me that they do like once a week. Mm -hmm. They take their junk out there and they pay their money and get rid of it off their lot you know okay just let yeah wait uh if you got specifics great uh, well but I'll, I'll have carla to you know just kind of pay a little bit closer attention i'm which sure one some of the neighbors are tired of looking at some of that stuff but i mean um it just seemed like just trying to clean up everything boats golf carts there's a lot of well that's what i'm concerned about how how big is that going to grow i mean yeah. how how big are those little lots going to grow into? And if we ever had a herd grain, you think anybody's going to take all their golf cart junk? No, oh, they're no. going to leave it here. They don't even take their RVs. All right, noted. Well, um, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, Signage on Highway 361. We we probably have more projects uh, right now in the works with TxDOT than, than the entire time I've been here. Uh, the relationship is great. Uh, they've been receptive. They're actually paying for a lot of what we've requested. The downside is they're a state agency and they move at their own pace, uh, but some progress. So uh, all the signs for the golf carts, uh, the directional signage and all that project, the signs are done. They're at Public Works. You might note one has actually one ground sign has been mounted over there on uh, on cutoff G. Uh, as you approach on G. Um, yeah. Right there. Uh, by the, the being, by Island Sports. Right. Being partially oh. obscured by a palm, which we've already addressed with the property owner. Uh, so they're going to trim that back, but uh, the mass signs uh, are going up just just any day. They're they uh, uh, they're they're receptive. They're they just got to schedule it. It's a scheduling issue. So they're already in place. Uh, the delineators. Um, uh, I, I reached out America Garza, who's kind of been the project lead out here for us. The the delineators uh, they actually had had were waiting for their budget to be replenished, and this is the between the Whataburger and CVS, yeah. that just happened. So that that project now, the materials are ordered. So that oh. should be moving very oh. quickly. Uh, we knew it wasn't gonna happen until after Labor Day. Right. I kind of thought we'd see some progress, but she did not She did respond today that that should be moving quickly now because the, uh, right. the budget impediments are, are removed. The uh, She also, uh, we've got a call tomorrow for final approval on placement of the radar signs that had been requested. They're also going to pay for those. Uh, wow. so we'll have multiple ones. Oh. Um, we'll have some, uh, I think, some input as to the final, the final type of sign. But I think what I heard and what David and I've talked about is one that that may show the actual speed, your speed, and a slowdown with some red, blue, mm -hmm. something like that. So it'll be something. Uh, and I think there'll be one both north of 1A uh, and south of 1A. Uh, and they're going to add a, a speed limit sign which they intended but never installed uh, north of 1A that uh, will be red outlined the second uh, a second 45 mile an hour sign that indicates that the second one that indicates you are in a 45 mile an hour zone. So uh, that'll be a little bit more identifiable. They've described it like with uh, some red surround or something like that. So um, all that is in the uh, all that is in the works too. So uh, not moving as fast, but it's moving. No, but at least it is. Uh, and then the last part, which has been a has been a big challenge, is because it's a novel idea. Textot has not done it anywhere, but our golf cart signs on the sidewalks, the the delineators, I call them, with the markings. Uh, they approved the delineators, and we sent them a prototype of some language that you guys saw here. Uh, then they came back and said, "Well, we don't know. We don't want the sign on it, uh, but you guys can stencil the sidewalk." Well, I was adamant. I, I think without the signage that is right in front of the bumper of that golf cart, it, it just loses its effectiveness 90%. Uh, so we went back and forth. They finally agreed uh, to a prototype. 
with one of their vendors that uh, that does the signage, which is fine, yeah. and uh, it it may cost us a little bit more. Um, so they're going to getting going to get us a turnkey quote for install the sign, but they've agreed to pretty much what you saw uh, in the mock up. Um, you know, no carts on this path or Highway 361, the golf cart with the arrow through. So um, that should also start happening pretty quickly. It's sure tight. Uh, I think Randall probably is familiar with them. Yeah. So uh, they're a good company and it's tech stats preferred. So that's fine. Uh, short term rentals 2778. Uh, Laura reported to me today with 27 pending uh, from one of the big property managers, which will take us to over 2800 uh, here shortly, currently registered. Our building permit trends continue as I've as I've been telling you every month, uh, year over year. Uh, it, it, it's still we're seeing less permits, 150 uh, through uh, today, as opposed to 260 through the same time, 266 through the same year over year time frame last year. So the uh, the, the the trend of less permits is continuing. Uh, and then last on my list was the uh, the striping of the streets project. Uh, uh, Urban just finished the the plans for each of the streets with measurements, the the linear foot, uh, linear uh, uh, dimensions and footage, um, and the uh, the bid came in just a little bit uh, a little bit more than 10k, kind of surprised, and that also included the uh, the uh, the stop sign that's uh, in front of all the 361 facing stop sign, uh, red striping. Uh, cross. Well, remember a couple of council meetings ago, we talked about maybe talking about improving or doing some better crosswalk oh, crosswalks. striping. This did not include in this project. that. This included restriping A and C in front of the schools and signage. Yeah, that's not in this. That's one. not in this one. This is just red striping and the refreshing of the double stripes and the other that we had on Down Cotter yes. and uh, okay. and those other streets. Refreshing those that have uh, have done that. So that uh, we should start to see progress. Um, uh, but like I said, Urban's uh, Urban's got the lead for that, and we just got the. We just got that information back uh, into last week. Uh, I think that's it, unless you guys have any questions. Okay. I'm like, Chuck brought it up. Just, just yeah. making sure. All right. So maybe we can revisit some of that. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Rick? That's a great report. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thanks. Lots yeah. of good progress happening. Swing by real quick on your way out, and we'll fire up the sound system. Um, EMS? Hello, Mary Mary. Good. I'm back again. Yeah, I was going to say, welcome. Mayor, yes. council, city I manager. Seen you a long time. I like Beard Dave. Thanks, <laughs> Rugged. Beard like Dave. I'd follow, I'd follow you into battle with. All right. Yeah, hey. go, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm here to talk about what our amazing EMS system has been up to for the month of August. Um, so, real quick, we're dispatched to uh, 111 calls. Uh, we use mutual aid six times this month. Uh, and that had to do largely because we had a couple of uh, MCIs. Uh, the most notable one was uh, Alistair, where we used uh, three services, including ours. So we had Corpus, uh, Halo Flight, and then Tri-County EMS as well. Um, we can talk about that one later, too, because that was an interesting one. Uh, it was the first time ever Halo Flights landed in Alistair. Alistair. Yeah, amongst hundreds of people. So uh, Hopefully the last. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> definitely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, average response time, four minutes, 32 seconds. Uh, we transported 53 patients. We treated transported 43. Uh, we were canceled, false alarms on six of them. Standbys, one. Uh, public assistance, five. And actually, a kind of a, a funny story to uh, touch on for public assistance, and actually one that will probably make you feel good. Um, one of our medics, Paul Jackson, he was dispatched to a fall along with his partner, Brian. Um, and anytime you get a fall, you, you know, it could be anything. It could be a mechanical fall. It could be a, a medical reason is why they fell. It could be the patient just needs to lift assistance. Uh, anyways, they show up and the guy actually didn't fall. He was, he was in his recliner uh, the whole time, but he didn't have access to uh, a working phone. So a lot of times whenever you have a, a phone, you can still access 911. Yeah. So he hit the, the 911 button um, and his electricity wasn't working. Oh, no. So... Uh, they help him out for 45 minutes. Uh, turns out he didn't pay his electric bill or his phone bill. He couldn't. And I get it. I understand that, you know, tough times. So uh, Paul actually offered to pay for his electric bill oh, for wow. him. 
And turns out he had to pay more than the electric bill because uh, he, he had some overdraft fees as well. But, you know, just just in that situation, um, I can't say that I would do something like that. I would probably lecture him on what a 911 call is and, and what it isn't. So it's nice to have amazing medics like that to uh, to work in your in your system. So he got a data boy from all of us. And it's uh, a good good sign. that There is some humanity in the world. But That's awesome. I want yeah. to share that with you guys. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Um, so you do have some really good people working for you. Sure. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, mutual aid. Uh, we were requested twice this month. Um, we uh, did a paddleboard standby, a uh, glow bike ride through town. Uh, that, that was fun. What's that? Where, where was that? I missed that. Uh, that was a couple Sounds weeks like ago. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I wanted to go to that too. I was that, actually on shift. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. It, it looks really it. cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to do it one of these years because yeah. I like yeah. cycling and, and it looks like fun. Um, and then we did an active shooter drill in Aransas Pass. So uh, those are always good because we always learn so much from those. Um, and uh, we how good, how, you always learn how uh, well everyone's radios don't work. With Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually uh, got a new channel on our radio because of that. So, um, yeah, learn something every time. Hopefully we can do one uh, in our city uh, soon and with RPD and, and fire, because I think, you know, um, God forbid, uh, something like that ever did happen. It'd be nice to to be up to speed with with yeah. some things it's important training clearly. oh yeah. for sure yes very important training uh, especially with everything going on these days so, um that's all i have for you all uh thanks for letting me come up here again and right. not booing me off the stage <laughs> yeah thanks for hanging out <laughs> oh, I did a great job i had to suck up to dave yeah. a little bit <laughs> why no no guys <laughs> he likes it <laughs> all right um Good. any questions Keep for me up. before uh before i depart you're doing a great job. Thank yeah, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. It. Thank the you. team's doing great. We thank appreciate you. you guys. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. you. All right, Chief Burroughs, you're next. And what? <laughs> Except David hasn't said anything yet. Oh, for what? <laughs> you don't have a city manager report? Yeah, but uh, mine's the whole package. Okay. I, I do have a question for you. Well, All right. Enough out of him. Go ahead. Chief. Yeah, I'm trying to do this like the young people do it off my phone. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Do, do you want my not paper? Sure. <laughs> Here. No, that's what's fine. You're not gonna be able to do that. So <laughs> you saw it about the middle of uh of August is like somebody threw a switch. Yeah. And things got semi-normal. Um uh, so our August stats are almost half of what they were for I July. Yeah, we had a had a good uh good Labor Day weekend and uh weekends are continuing to be busy, but the, the beaches are so you can't turn a week, so it's it's beautiful down there if you haven't been down there. Um, Perfect. We did get our officer from the Arlington Police Department um, through backgrounds, and he started the FTO program. And we also filled our last dispatch position, so we're 100% full in dispatch. We still have two openings on patrol. Uh, continue to, to try to recruit for that. We're going to a regional recruiting event in San Antonio in a couple of weeks and going to send some officers up and see if we can and poach somebody out of the San Antonio area um, to come down here. Uh, unfortunately, we also have two officers who are both out on extended medical leave for ones for a work-related injury and ones for a for a health health issue. And our probably our worst news is uh, our parking enforcement guy Alex. I see. Uh, got poached from uh, from us by by code enforcement. Oh. So your code enforcement will probably go way up and our parking enforcement will probably it's drop. Gonna out. <laughs> it's going to balance out. But, yeah. uh, but Good we're, we're going to lose him around the, the 1st of uh, January and he'll become a full-time city employee, which is, I think, a good pickup for the city. We have hired a an individual to um, to step into that position. I don't want to say replace him, but to step into that position. And he's currently going through, through background checks and we should have him ready to go in, in two to three weeks. And we're still, we actually have two two openings because one of our our other parking enforcement person went over to the animal control officer position a couple of months ago. So we're we're still advertising for that other position. Uh, and then finally, my annual shameless plug for National Night Out coming up in two weeks on uh, I think it's the third of October. The first we have Tuesday. BML oh, going to be in Dallas. In Dallas, yeah, yeah. BML. It happened last year. It, I know. Why you were here? You know, so why you didn't have that good dinner with us. So talk to TML and tell them how, how poor their, their scheduling is. And it's every, crazy. Everybody in the States. Everybody in the States I know. Or, 
Yeah. It's not I just Port Aransas. Yeah. It's the entire state. It's yeah, so it's um, always that. But we, we've had great um, community outreach, community mm -hmm. support again this year. Uh, Sonic's Paula's doing a great job. Us, uh, IGA, Pizza Hut, and Domino's are both both bringing pizza in. We've got a bounce house. Susanna Reeder donated one of those great big circus tents since the pavilions tied up. And we've probably got thirty five or forty individuals that have stepped up and help put this on. It's going to be a going to be a real real nice event. And for the first time since Harvey, we're actually going to go back and have a neighborhood event also oh. simultaneously. Uh, Channel Vista. Bill and Barbara Smith will learn channel channel this or kind of host a a neighborhood event for that neighborhood. So that's what I heard. Oh yeah. I heard that too. I saw that. Oh yeah, I heard Facebook. that. Amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> so bring I'll, do, I'll donate for that. Okay. Great any, report. Thanks any issues you. on anybody? From anybody? <laughs> Take home policy. Oh. How's that working? Um, the parking lot looks a little empty, so we're getting, yeah. there. getting there. Okay. Way, way through there, and we did get the license plate readers installed uh, the day before our deadline. So we had almost twenty hours of, of, of wiggle in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, the gas. You, I know there's an article in the paper, but can you give everybody an update on your gas? Yeah, so we're still working. We're still waiting on Corpus. They're they're working on the on a on a tie-in facility. Um, they're just about there, but it'll it'll tie in the isolated island network, which is TR offshore and Aqua Tranquilo, which is our provider. Those two, as you know, do no longer have a delivery pipeline um, to the outside world. It used to go under the ship channel, a 16 inch line. That was how 97% of their product got to market. That got um, pinched off in late January of this past year. So they've been actively trying to figure out how to get their gas to market. Of course, as you know, they had to squeeze down all their wells. That's what, uh, led to the the outage and back in uh, spring break, so they've been very active the last six months attempting to get connectivity to the the grid, the gas grid. They knew going back under the ship channel was a no go. It was twenty plus million for that line, and you know that you know the production wouldn't have paid for that. So they looked going to Corpus. So there were some old abandoned lines that they had. Um, uh, in their arsenal that they had uh, use over. And so they were able to get connectivity to the Corpus gas system. So now they'll be able to transfer gas into that system. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, any, any, very soon we should have the ability to, if, if the wells all went down on the island, Corpus would be able to hit a switch and backflow Corpus gas through the TR system to the city gate fish pass and backfeed the city. Um, so that's great news. Um, we're super appreciative of Corpus um, working with us and working with Lawrence and, and our team and getting that hooked up. So um, we should have that in place pretty quick. So I think that's a huge yeah. win. Yeah, that's great. So thanks for everyone who's been working yeah. towards that. That's good. So that's going to be a big help. Really good. One other quick item, Fran's going to um, send out a we we kind of we were notified by Nueces County of a little snafu in the uh, tax rate um, process. Uh, one of the things that the county is supposed to do is it's the the week five days prior to our tax rate approval meeting, right? No, yeah, it will. It has to be these five days. It's supposed to be. Yeah, so they were supposed to put that the the ad in the jetty, saying, "Hey, here's the here's the tax rates for the the city of Port Aransas. That's their job. They notified us day before yesterday that they sent the ad to a incorrect email address and it was never posted." So we we're in a position where we have to 
redo the ad, which we've done, but we have to hold a quick meeting next week. I need four of you to come in for five minutes and do a quick one, one reading blessing in a meeting. So it's really just the public hearing. We have to hold a public hearing and then we'll vote again to adopt the tax rate. It was everywhere else it should have been because we put it on the website. We put it on the Truth and Taxation County um, link. And the Jenny actually wrote an article that we were going to have the public hearing, but we thought it was would be in our best interest to go ahead and post again, have a public hearing, just so that nobody can contest and say that we yeah. didn't have that public uh -huh. hearing advertised. So it's in the Jetty today. Wednesday at five. It should take five minutes, 10 minutes. So Fran will send out an email tomorrow polling you guys who can show up. Okay. Wednesday at five. What is that day? Okay. Hopefully four people can come. We're, yeah. we're going to get four people there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get four. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, some advice was, oh, just let it roll. It's fine. But no, we, we're not going to do that. I can do that. They have been us Too risky. Four. Okay. That's all I got. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Item 11, City Council comments and items for future consideration. All right. So just to reconfirm, the public safety building dedication is Friday, October 13th. Yes. At 10 a.m. Yes. Correct. Okay. So yeah. I'll make plans to be there. We can be there. TML, we're working on our dinner. We just about have our dinner reservation. So we'll send out a TML update to everyone okay. soon. Right. Um, said, for Tuesday evening. Yeah. So okay. we'll push next you guys out some TML or updates. Or not next meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Team dinner's the 10th. Or no, excuse me, no. the third. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? We're good. All right. <laughs> oh, and if you want to hear a demo. Oh, yeah. Go yes. get your demo.